during his State of the Union speech on Tuesday. President Obama will announce a plan to close tax loopholes. The White House says Obama will call for an end to certain loopholes on trust funds, increases in the top tax rates on dividends and capital gains, and impose new fees on financial firms that borrow heavily. Other changes include requiring businesses to automatically enroll employees into individual retirement accounts. The White House proposal would also include tax breaks for families with two working members, child care, and paying college tuition. The Liberty Beat is made possible with the help of Central Texas Gunworks, your online source for firearms, firearm accessories, and ammunition. They take major credit cards and now accept Bitcoin. Visit them online at shop.centraltexasgunworks.com. Support also comes from the Conscious Resistance Network. Videos, news reports, and articles from a spiritual anarchist perspective. Experience the Conscious Resistance at theconsciousresistance.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Monday, January 19th, 2015. Make sure you check out our website at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan reporting. Reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. Shortly after beginning his first date with area woman Pauline Geary, smitten local man Brad Holtman told Onion reporters he couldn't believe that the woman was also a fan of the 1960s British rock band, The Beatles. We were just talking about music and she mentioned that she liked The Beatles, which is crazy because I love the Beatles, actually. Yeah, funny thing is, I was not really even looking forward to the date. Uh, I figured we'd get a drink or whatever, but it's turning out a lot cooler than I thought it was going to. I mean, she's just such a huge fan. She knows all the Beatles names. She even owns some of their albums. I've been a Beatles fan since like sixth or seventh grade, so I don't want to get too excited and jump into something. So I think I'm going to ask her if she's ever seen The Godfather, which is probably my top five movies of all time. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. I don't know if we have our network present with us, or maybe they just weren't sending audio down or something happened with the music beds, but we'll presume things are working on their end and move ahead with the show. Welcome to Free Talk Live. With you in studio tonight, you've got me, Ian. Derek J. And Mark. And don't forget, you can join us online over at freetalklive.com. Derek J., it's good to have you back, although a little sooner than was expected. Last yeah. I didn't want to be here in particular. I wanted to be at the Russ Ulbricht trial, which is still happening in New York City. It is. And uh, there was a situation in which the uh, the protesters, of which you were one of these outreach guys out in front holding signs, supporting Russ Ulbricht, and trying yeah. to alert the potential juror, perhaps, to what the penalty was that he was facing. That's right. They didn't like that very much. The defense team didn't like that. And that kind of hurt my feelings, but I had to deal with it and say, you know, the defense team knows what's best, and I've donated all this money to Ross's defense, not in vain, you know, so I want to make sure that I comply with what they request, and they were very nice about it. Um, I, I think they're doing an awesome job shedding doubt on the government's case against Ross Ulbricht. Yeah, it's fascinating. I, I really went from kind of like just you know having no hope of things uh, working out there um to being like i think i have a reasonable doubt yeah me too i was uh, i was very disappointed from day 1 when they were um saying that jury nullification wasn't helping the jury nullification effort that, that i wasn't doing but uh, there were others out there and mm -hmm. they they were just the defense team was saying that the the protesters weren't helping even though they meant to be and I, I sort of thought maybe the defense team is just saying that. Maybe it's just lip service so that they can look good in front of, the, front judge. of the judge. But it turns out that wasn't the case. And so I just packed my bags and went home and started doing productive things here. So, you know, the Liberty Beat at thelibertybeat.com is doing an awesome job of covering sure the, the story. They're still there, I believe, or actually just left. I know John Bush uh, had told me that he intended to get funding to come back next week. As Excellent. In this week. Uh, as in tomorrow, because the trial resumes tomorrow morning, yes. of Ross Ulbricht, who's the man accused of running the Silk Road. And of course, we're going to continue following it as uh, detailed as we possibly can here. Uh, we do have some news that I've been holding on to regarding the 
jury and their apparent confusion surrounding the whole internet thing. Hmm. Uh, that's uh, Apparently it's an issue with the case. We can talk more about that as the show goes on here tonight. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Derek J., you're fired up about a movie uh, this, uh, it's about a sniper. American Sniper, is that what it's called? Yeah, and let me just preface this. I have an article from... I a, haven't seen a trailer. I don't know anything about this. I've just heard something about this guy, like, that he's dead, and that's about all I know. Yeah, I'm, I'm full disclosure, not terribly informed about him. I know Chris Kyle. I heard the story. That's the name of the, the sniper. Okay. And I, I remember hearing in the news when he was shot... Um, at a gun range by a 25-year-old nut who just sort of went crazy. Hmm. That was very sad. I don't like to see people dying ever. And uh, But the reason I am so emotional about this, and I was very depressed today when I, when I saw the news about oh, this. No. Yeah, well, I'm over it now. But I was so sad that this movie, American Sniper, is shattering box office records, uh, beating out Avatar, which I thought, what? you know. Yeah. Wow. Oh, uh, you know, okay, I'm sorry. I was thinking Avatar's not in the movie theaters. No, but Avatar <laughs> was was a big deal when it came out, and at least it was like a family-friendly, go bring your kids and sure, watch there's a nice animated message. characters. There's a nice message. Right, and now here's a war film that's beating it out, and that makes me very sad because it just tells me the the humanity soup that I'm in. Like, well, this is what people want. What's and the deal I, with this guy, like that. Chris Kyle? Like, what's the story with him? <laughs> he's allegedly the number one sniper in American history ever. So he's got the most confirmed kills, which is 255. Some speculate it could be higher than that. And he was involved in a lot. Iraq, in Iraq. Yeah, he Iraq. Yeah, he was sent to Iraq in 2003 okay. and served a six-year stint and uh, killed a lot of people in that time. Now... The movie, uh, produced by Clint Eastwood, directed by Clint Eastwood, sort of paints a picture. I haven't seen it, full disclosure. I don't intend to see it because I don't like these kind of movies. I just don't go out to the theaters and pay money to go watch people getting blown up. That makes, yeah, it's kind of depressing to me. I can see that, sure. But I I still think it's important to, to talk about because this is what... People are seeing this. Is, so this is the number one movie. There's, yeah. It's presumable that a lot of people in our audience tonight have seen this film. Right. Uh, and certainly you're welcome to comment on your thoughts. I don't know. Like I said, I haven't even seen a trailer for it. You came into the show. You told us this is something you wanted to talk about. Mark, yeah. are you familiar with this uh, Chris Kyle? Well, other than just sort of the news uh, that occurred when he was when he died. But wait, now wasn't there something about Jesse Ventura and a lawsuit? Yes, I remember that too. What's that all about? I mean, I don't know anything. If you know something, please fill me in. I I don't know. I plead total ignorance. I've never heard about anything this. about that. Yeah, I'm Jesse Ventura said happen. said something, um, and uh, you know, I think I think Chris Kyle said something, and Jesse Ventura okay. sued him. Well, none of us are prepared on on that question. I'm sorry. It was just something I heard about. My point in bringing this up is that this is a movie, and I think a lot of people are taking it as a documentary, right? It's an it's entertainment flick. Yes, yeah. it's a Hollywood film. But the danger in doing a story about a real-life person is that a lot of times people will gather their facts from a yes. movie, and they'll think, this is what happened. Mm-hmm. And I want to shed some light on the actual facts of yeah. who Chris Kyle was. Oh, there's good. A, That's what an, I want to know. Who right. is this guy? <laughs> well, there's an excellent article at The Guardian by Lindy West. It's gotten uh, over 123,000 shares, which is quite a lot for The is Guardian f- or any article. Is a newer article? No, it's from uh, January 6th of this year. So it's fairly it's new. Rel- relatively yeah. new, but okay. not from this week. So it's let's, a lot of shares let's dive week. in. Lindy says, quote, I have to confess, I was suckered by the trailer for American Sniper. It's a masterpiece of short-form tension, a confluence of sound and image so viscerally evocative, it feels almost domineering. You cannot resist. You will be stressed out. You will feel. Or, as I believe I put it in a blog about the trailer, Clint Eastwood's American Sniper trailer will ruin your pants. But however effective... It is, as a piece of cinema, even a cursory look into the film's backstory, and particularly the public reaction to its release, raises disturbing questions about which stories we can choose to codify into truth, and whose, and why, and the messy social costs of transmogrifying real life into entertainment. Now, I had to look that word up. Yeah, I was just going to say, I need a little help. (laughs) It um, basically means transforming or... Uh, yeah, basically. So bringing something that is real into entertainment form. Got it. Chris Kyle, 
a U.S. Navy SEAL from Texas was deployed to Iraq in 2003 and claimed to have killed more than 255 people during his six-year military career. In his memoir, Kyle reportedly describes killings as, quote, fun. Oh, boy. Something he, quote, loved. He was unwavering. What a in hero. His, yeah, right. Um, he was unwavering in his belief that everyone he shot was a, quote, bad, bad guy. guy. Quote, well, you'd have to. Sounds uh, like a real thinker. So, well, you, you, I think that you'd have to think that in order to re- retain your sanity, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, the reality is, is if you're going around killing people for, uh, you know, truth, justice, and the American way, is that you're gonna have some collateral damage. You're gonna kill some innocent people, but it probably helps you to keep your sanity and allow you to sleep at night and um, those sorts of things. If you just assume everybody that you killed was a bad guy, mm-hmm. now what does bad guy mean? Uh, I, you know, like I have a six-year-old son, and I don't like the term bad guy. I believe bad guy is a term that we should use only in literature or entertainment or media, whatever you want to call it, because I, I don't think that. It, I, I, you know, when you're talking about people, some do good things, some do bad things. Um, I have uh, I read a story of, for instance, a um, a fire chief who's saved uh, the lives of countless people. You know, done all kinds of great work as a fireman and that sort of thing. Punches a guy in the nose, mm. and he you know gets charged by the local municipality or whatever, and has to deal with all the problems that go into that. Well. I mean, you, you kind of look at this, and, and as I understand the story, the dude uh, blew past him while he had his lights on and, you know, doing fire mini type stuff or something. Mm. And then he goes and to the guy's uh, driveway. The guy wasn't uh, sufficiently contrite, and the fire chief punches him in the nose. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, I mean, it's, it's, you know, there's no good guys and bad guys in this world. There's people that do, you know, good things and bad things. And the idea that we're going to get all whipped out of shape here, it, It's a simpleton's approach to say there's bad guys. Sure. I want to come back uh, with more about the simpleton here in a moment. 855-450-FREE. You can take control here as well. This is Free Talk Live. Here's a special message for those of you who owe the IRS at least 10000 or more in back taxes. The IRS has special programs in place that could eliminate or reduce your tax debt by thousands of dollars. Call the tax helpline that has been set up to help you. 800-691-6129. That's 800-691-6129. Stop the wage garnishments, levies, and tax liens now. Once you've qualified and enrolled, the IRS will stop all the collection activities against you. These unique programs have been allocated to help the economy and significantly reduce or eliminate your tax burden. The IRS is currently accepting reduced settlements and other favorable programs. You may qualify for substantial savings, so get the help you need. For free information and to see if you qualify, take down the number now for the Tax Representation Hotline. 800-691-6129. That's 800-691-6129. 800-691-6129. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. Farmers keep livestock lean and healthy with a mineral-rich diet. Then, before market, they cut off minerals, leading them to crave high-calorie grains. If weight control is this easy, why prescribe surgery for humans? Introducing Longevity. You could avoid 900 diseases by getting 90 essential nutrients from Longevity. Check out 90 for Life at tobeyoungagain.com or call 855-79-YOUNG. That's 855-79-YOUNG or tobeyoungagain.com. Longevity. It's all about saving money, getting healthy, and creating wealth. Free Talk Live. Dear FTL, we've got Chemtrail down here in West Virginia. Be nice. You've never seen them? (laughs) Contrail disappear relatively quickly compared (laughs) to the Chemtrail. If anybody that's listening that wants to fight the Chemtrails, there's things called What are you going to fight them? (laughs) Wait a minute. Big fans? Wadbusters? (laughs) I got to give UFO hoaxers more credit. 
At least they go out and build a little saucer and they tie no, it to a cardboard string. saucer. And they, the yeah, I'd love to see a semi-legitimate website reporting anything on this particular uh, issue. I don't. I, I just I haven't think, seen. It. I don't think you're gonna get that. Cause Semi, I just asked semi-legitimate. You want a doctor to say it? There's a bunch of ones. Oh, there's the doctors. Doctors. Just because you're a doctor doesn't mean you're an expert I, or smart, or it doesn't even mean you're a doctor. <laughs> okay. Go, okay. Go on my website later on tonight, and I'll be Doctor Manwich. Okay. <laughs> Free talk live seven nights a week. From 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Nestle Pure Life Water, helping you drink better and live better by providing a zero-calorie alternative to sugary drinks. Visit us at nestle-purelife.us. When kids are playing, they often don't want to stop to keep hydrated, so send them out with a bottle of water and encourage them to take frequent drink breaks or call them inside for a quick sip. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You're invited here to take control of the airwaves, 855-450-FREE. Or not, you can sit back and listen to if you want, 855-450-3733. As we join you here, it's Ian in studio. Derek J. And Mark. Check out Derek's website, DerekJ.me. You get there, uh, you go there, and you get a lot more Derek J. In fact, uh, Derek, you do five shows on That's right. uh, radio and slash video. Some of them are video shows. Some of them radio shows. What do you do these I days? Do, I always do video. Everything always. I do always has video. Yeah, okay. we live in the 21st century, man. <laughs> Can't just keep it audio only. <laughs> So what are you doing? What are, give me a recap. I, do, I like to talk about Bitcoin stuff, I, mm-hmm. and I'm always uh, taking phone calls. I like to keep it interactive and, and let people voice their own concerns about what's going on in the world of Bitcoin, the world of peaceful resistance, or in the world of uh, police accountability. So I do Cop Block Radio on Wednesdays, mm-hmm. and I do Peace News Tuesdays and Thursdays. I do this show and uh, Freedom Fiends sometimes. So Somehow it's fi- all great. I find time to run a, a thrift store as well. That's you right. made it into the newspaper about that just yeah. recently, a Bitcoin new, uh, art article here in Keene, New Hampshire, focusing on businesses that accept Bitcoin, had your picture. Yeah, but my focus is on giving people a voice. So uh, all the shows I do are interactive, they're Mm call-in, and not everyone can host their own show. So I make it easy for people to get their voice heard and uh, get the news out there. And you do a great job, and all of it's available for download and viewing over at DerekJ.me. Yeah. As we continue with your calls, of course, you can bring up anything you want. The American Sniper, though, apparently the number one box office take over the weekend, smashing through records, uh, yeah. allegedly. I haven't read these stories, but thankfully, Derek J., you have, and you're sharing with us some detail about this, I guess, the movie and the person as well, the Chris Kyle. Yeah, Chris Kyle is his name, and I want to talk about who the person is because people will get a skewed view from the movie, and they should know that. So I want to get into that here, but let's bring Liberty Phoenix on. He's in Illinois via Skype. Hello, Phoenix. Do we have Liberty Phoenix going once, Liberty Phoenix going twice? Oh, you know what? I don't know. Maybe he's muted himself. We'll see if we can bring him up later. So uh, continue on then. Yeah, I w- so I was telling about uh, who the real Chris Kyle is, because in the movie, uh, and even in the trailers that you'll see, he uh, has sympathy. If you could tell that he has sympathy for these people um, that he is sometimes in a position to kill. Okay. But according to his own words, he described the killings as, quote, fun. Well, sympathy is different from empathy, right? Sympathy, you feel sorry for the person you're killing. Empathy would be that you can put yourself in their shoes. Okay, so uh, just to give people an example, in one of the trailers, which anyone can see, is uh, he's training his 
crosshairs onto a, a young man, a, a, a child. A boy. Yeah. And we just watched this, by the way. So Mark and I had started the show without having seen it, and we did just watch that trailer. And he's saying to himself, just drop it, drop it. You know, so that would be empathy to me that he's saying, I don't want to shoot this person. I can put myself in his shoes and mm-hmm. I don't want to do this. But that's according to his words, that's not really what he's like. Hmm. He loved it. That's his words. Wow. He said, quote, um, he was unwavering in his belief that everyone he shot was a bad guy, even apparently that child. Quote, I hate the damn savages, he wrote. Oh, man. I, quote. These are human beings. I couldn't give a flying F about the Iraqis. Okay, so Sick. how much empathy do you think he really had? Not he, much. He bragged about murdering looters during Hurricane Katrina. I don't think you can have empathy for somebody that you think is a savage. I don't think that... You know, that, that that's possible, that you're capable of that as a human being. Right. I don't want to just put too much on this guy, like, oh, this was some evil guy. But, like, the military kind of does this to people. Don't they train you? Now, I've never been in the military, but isn't it necessary that the boot camp commanders and all of the, your commanding officers sort of make you dehumanize your enemy? I think that's what the intention is, but I mean, obviously we have people in the liberty movement who were in the military who presumably went through that very same training and, you know, managed to survive with their sanity intact. Well, so, you have to, I mean, you're, you're training for a job, and when the job's over, then, you know, you, you may or may not continue to apply that training for the rest of your life, right? So... Uh, I mean, I've had work that I do that I don't do in my civilian life. I've just do, or, you know, my non-work life. I shouldn't use the term civilian because I didn't work for the government. But I've done work that, you know, I don't have any business doing when I'm not at work. So this is sort of that situation. Now, the savages thing, I wonder, th- this is going to be one of those situations where what exact, well, who are we talking about when we talk about savages? This is going to be parsing of terms, right? Yeah, well- like, you assume... When he says savages, that he means everybody who lives in the Middle East or something. Um, and, but the, uh, another person listening is going to be, well, he's only talking about the very worst of the bad guys that he killed, right? In order to make the term, to soften the term. Maybe. And then that goes back to what you uh, left off on about bad guys. Like, who are these bad guys? I, I agree with you, Mark, that we like could ditch the term because— you I'll know, tell you who the bad guys are. The bad guys are the politicians that sent them into the Iraq in the first place. Exactly. This guy wouldn't have had to kill 255 people. He didn't have to kill anyone. Okay. Yeah, but no one would be in this scenario. No one, you know, the kid— picking up the, the rifle, the kid wouldn't be picking up the rifle because there would be no one to oppose because the American forces wouldn't be there. Well, we had mm. uh, Lionel on on Saturday and he was talking about how he supported the troops or whatever. And I think that this is a platitude in order to not have an argument about supporting the troops. Sure. I don't particularly support anyone who is uh, out doing something that if I, I like, I, I don't agree with the war, so I don't really support the troops in their role in the war. Of course not. How Do I you? think that the government that is paying these people to do a job should take care of them um, if they get injured or they, if they need help afterwards, if they get PTSD? Absolutely, I think that. But that's not support. That's just mm-hmm. what. Uh, that's just a sense of fairness. Yeah, and kind of honoring a contract as well. Well, more about this guy. He bragged about murdering looters during Hurricane Katrina. That's not been substantiated. Whoa. But regardless, who brags about that kind of thing? Well, he also claimed to have knocked out Jesse Ventura, and that's what that. Uh, oh, that was what the that claim was. That was what the lawsuit was about. Yeah. Okay. Uh, he was murdered in 2013 at a Texas gun range by 25-year-old veteran. Uh, reportedly suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder. And just in that one sentence, I think you see a lot about the military and and what it does to people. I mean, there's a 25-year-old guy suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder, and he's at a gun range? Yeah. And he's shooting? Yikes. I I just, I don't like that there even exists an organization that could mess with a person's mind to that degree. It's It's so sad. It's ironic that this guy had how many confirmed kills? 200-something? The most most killingest sniper or whatever in American history or something like that? Look, I don't hate him for that. 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 That What I was saying was that it was ironic that he spent this whole career killing all these people from such a distance and that... And then it ended for him uh, by a gun held by one of his own, you know, somebody else who was in the very same military he was, who went through much of the similar training that he went through. It was one of his own that ended up taking him out and likely at a fairly close range. I don't know how close he was, but probably nowhere near as far away as, uh, say, the sniper was during his job. Right. You know, and I... um. 
like when I look at sort of the bravery factor, I can look at a sniper and see success, right? Like you're mm -hmm. hitting your target, you're not hitting your target. Um, in many cases, snipers are sort of away from the action. I'm not saying that, uh, like, it seems like the average guy who's on the ground would get a higher bravery rating to me than the sniper, you know, because they're sort of hidden off somewhere picking people off. Does that, make, does that make any sense to you? Well, I mean, I see where you're coming from, but I, there's some sort of a... I don't know if it's a love affair that American media or Hollywood has with the sniper as this. It's a skill. You know, it's a character. high skill level. Yeah. So they focused on snipers in a number of different films. There was one about a Russian sniper uh, called Enemy at the Gates, which was a very good film. Uh, I, I saw that several years ago. 855 450 free. That's the toll free number. This is Free Talk Live. Hi, this is Larry Smith. Sometimes bad things happen to good people. When the cleaners ruined some special clothing, all they could do was show us a sign that said they weren't responsible. But when they got the letter from one of our Legal Shield attorneys, he promptly gave us a check for $1,152. Worry less and live more with lsprotection.com. That's lsprotection.com or call 855-340-SAVE. That's 855-340-7283. Results will vary from case to case. We love that you're passionate about GCN. And whether you're a listener, a business owner, or a radio industry professional, we've redesigned the new GCN newsletter to keep you in the know. Get updates on your favorite GCN shows and hosts. Go to GCNlive.com and click on the banner in the upper left corner. Just for signing up, you're automatically entered for monthly giveaways. Start receiving your newsletter letter today the future of talk radio gcn hi i'm derek j to me an activist's calling is to actively work to advance a cause the cause for which i work is personal freedom i believe my life is best when i engage in voluntary interactions and self-government i reject the idea that anyone else has a higher claim to my life or my body than i do I see people who call themselves the government as a threat to my personal freedom. I realize you may feel differently, but my relationship with the people who call themselves the government is completely involuntary. If Starbucks used some of its money to drop bombs, I wouldn't shop there. So why would I support the American empire? The empire does not require my consent. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. That's VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. RATS is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. RATS was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. RATS is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download RATS free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. Are you getting squeezed by the economic downturn? Hey, you were doing fine. Then, all of a sudden, you're having a tough time paying your family's credit card bills. Maybe you were downsized or even lost a job, but you still owe 10 grand or more in credit card bills. And you just can't afford the minimum payments anymore. We're here to help. We are the Genesis Debt Partners. We know the secrets to negotiate better terms with your creditors. Make a free 10-minute call right now and learn how we can help you get out of debt. 800-981-7590. If you owe 10 grand or more in credit card debt and you want to learn how you can pay less and get out of debt faster, call right now. 800-981-7590. 800-981-7590. Get out of debt now. 800-981-7590.
Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Dial toll-free here at 855-450-FREE. Join us online. You can uh, connect to the show via Skype at Skype username lrn.fm. We were talking about and are talking about The American Sniper, this uh, film that is apparently breaking box office records. Who is this, Eric? What was his name? Chris Kyle? Chris yes. Kyle. Chris Kyle. Uh, Chris Kyle, who is this guy? We're learning more about him here. And, of course, we'll take your calls. 855-450-FREE. So a lot of people want to spread the ideas of liberty. And here's a neat way to do it. You can do it from the back of your car with libertystickers.com. You can reach thousands of people. Uh, um, you know, depending on where you are, you can reach about thousands of people a week, maybe thousands of people a day, depending on your situation. But you know people love to read bumper stickers. You can go check out the vast selection of witty, poignant, pithy, and downright bombastic liberty-oriented messages at libertystickers.com. It's worth it. Just go to libertystickers.com and just page through the uh, the, the bumper stickers because there's some neat stuff there, libertystickers.com. All right, let's go to your calls and thoughts. And I know, Derek J., you've got more to tell us about Oh, yes. This guy, Chris Kyle. Let's go first, though, to Keith. He's in North Carolina listening to Talk Radio 850. Hey, Keith. Hey, what's going on, guys? Hey, what's on your mind tonight? Hey, just, I, I listen to you guys on my way home from work from time to time, and I don't always agree with everything, but I'm not supposed to. Indeed. Sure. <laughs> um, so I, I, just, I, I got in my vehicle on my way home, and I caught the tail end of something you guys said. I just want to make sure that I'm understanding what you guys are saying. You said something to the effect of he. there's something out there saying that he was bragging about killing looters. Is that correct? That's correct. Is that is that substantiated or is that hearsay? The claim is substantiated, but the actual event is not. Does that make sense? So he, he has said that he killed, said it. Yeah, he said that okay, he killed I, looters, but we can't be sure. What, I mean, did he say it, that you're hearing this? Or during Hurricane Katrina was the claim. Just to clarify what we're talking about here. Killed looters during Hurricane Katrina, meaning in the United States. That's correct. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, I'll, I'll be honest with you, I mean, I, I just want to get your stance, because I have heard what you're saying about support the troops, not support the troops. I understand what you're saying. So, you support the troops, but you don't support their mission. Is that correct? I don't know what that means when you say um, one supports the troops but doesn't support the mission. I mean, it's like no, saying. You. Well, no, I guess the answer is no, because if I don't support the murder, the I don't support the hitman, right? Okay. Okay, so and I know your I know what you guys stand for as far as being in Afghanistan and Iraq and all that. Yeah, I've listened to you enough. I understand that. So, do would you support them if they were defending your freedoms? Well, yes, I guess I would, but I'd like to see when that happens. i will fight alongside them. I don't need to support them. I'd support them with ammunition and my my blood, sweat, and tears. Right. I said I'm not arguing. I just want to make sure I'm understanding you guys. Yep. So you probably, I'm I'm guessing just from listening to you guys enough, you would support the mission in Afghanistan, but not Iraq, correct? No, I don't no. support either of them. I don't support war. I don't think that they protect this. I don't think they're protecting people in the United States. I think that's what the Department of Defense should be concerned with: is defending the vast majority of people, not the interests of a few rich people, but the the vast majority. Right. Okay. Of people. Yeah, and I'm not Mark. I'm that. Ian. I'm I'm pretty much a, almost a pacifist. Not quite. I believe in self-defense, but I don't believe in war between states and things like that. What about you, Derek J? Uh, no, I don't support the troops. I, I no, certainly not. I support the ones simple as that. I support the ones who've left. I support the troops like Bradley uh, Manning and the others who have heroically stood up and refused uh, to obey orders and have you know left the ranks. You know, when ordered to uh, to kill innocent people, I support those very, very few troops. And, well, I support his decision, absolutely. Now, somebody just sounded in and said they do not support the troops, period. Yeah, that's me. I'm Derek did I J. That, did I hear that correctly? Yes. So, uh, I just want to throw a hypothetical out there and, you, and get your take on it. Sure. So, what would you, would you support them if we were actually being invaded or bombed? Well, who's we? We as the United States. Yeah. Um, well, okay, that's one yeah. What about the guy? No, 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 no. I'm, not, that was like a that was a thinking loud. yeah. I, I, I don't. I no. I I don't. I I support really? protecting myself, 
people who are bombed for whatever reason. I, 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 this no, is no, a, no, some no, weird question. hypothetical. I, my question was, Not that if weird. we were being physically attacked, Who's we? Is, is my me. area being attacked? We have a country. No, I have no relationship to the people in California. I know some individuals who are in California. I would be sad if they were uh, hurt. But no, I, I don't see myself as having some sort of bond with people in Nevada or Utah or anywhere. Well, Derek, just to clarify something, you did uh, apply for a concealed weapons license in New Hampshire. It was your intention to concealed carry a firearm. So were you to be attacked, you might actually defend yourself with a gun. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, you, I believe in protecting you myself. A, you, you guys are getting off subject, though. No. <laughs> But no, I'm talking about personal responsibility here. I have no personal responsibility to hire a hitman to go uh, um, kill people who are allellegedly uh, killing other people. I don't want to get involved in all of this killing. I want to be that's, out that's of not, it. That's not what I asked you. That's not what I asked you. I think it is. And I'm not sure. I mean, I'm not sure how many of you guys are actually there on the show right now. There's three of us. I'm sorry okay, about so the whole confusion. Again, my question was: If the country, the United States, we were attacked. Not just uh, one bomb in Boston, but physically, it's literally attacked. Yeah. What would your stance be then? Keith, I, I think we're having a miscommunication because I don't see a country as a real thing. It's an idea, and when you say we are being attacked, I don't really know what you're saying or what you're talking about because that question doesn't actually make sense to me. I'm not okay, being attacked. If I am being attacked, I will defend myself. If people I know and love are being attacked, I will defend them. Is okay, that clear? So if the country is being attacked, and, and I'm just want to make sure I'm understanding, is that the country itself? There is no we, country, man. You you understand what I say? No, okay. because we're having a miscommunication. I I am of the no, opinion. We're not. No, that there not. is no such thing yeah, as a country. You believe in countries, and that's where this is breaking down, Keith. I mean, I think, Derek, I don't want to speak for you, Derek, but you know, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, I try to see people as individuals. Yeah, and exactly. It's certainly true that some individuals could volunteer together to form some sort of a group of individuals. For instance, we so are you, in you the studio tonight. Then. I'm sorry? So you guys don't believe in, in a country's so sovereignty or borders? No, I only believe in individual sovereignty. And you can certainly have borders on your own private property. I like the idea of private property. Property, but I don't believe in the idea of the state. Well, I, think I believe it's a in borders in the horrible idea. Wait a second. I believe in borders. If you know, for instance, Mexico is rolling. Uh, you know, there are tanks coming across the border with Mexican flags flying That's on the back. Sort of what my question was, guys, is really not that difficult. Well, you're actually you're talking to three people, and that's what the difficulty well, yeah. is. And you're talking about different grades of sort of practicality. Derek is taking as the same the same philosophical position I am, but in a very impractical way. I will take a practical position that we have, uh, you know, if people with guns and planes and tanks and artillery comes attacking us, I am willing to use the people with guns, tanks, and artillery in order to fight them. You off. won't be using those people, Mark. You're not in charge. I'm. Uh, you, no, you're never you going will not to be, be ordering in, those tanks or wherever, anything. If they want to run over your house, they're going to do it. And they're going to bomb your house if they think there's Completely a bad guy accurate. hiding yeah. inside it. It's a big mess, Keith, because violence begets violence. And when you say that, oh, uh, th if people are attacked, then we can defend against them and we can use these soldiers and these politicians will order them around. I have no part in any of that. I can't control it and I don't want to take responsibility for it. So I don't my, fund my position it is to say, I want out. I will not support it. Yeah, what do you think about that, Keith? Wow. I don't know what to think about what you guys just said, to be honest with you. Um, it's a fair answer. I understand, your, I understand your philosophy on the... I understand some of it. Some of it, to me, makes no sense at all. But at the same time, the, whoever the guy is who's saying that I believe in personal property, and if you believe in that, then you're not there because even though I have my own personal property, I pay for it, I would defend it. It's not mine. If I don't pay my taxes, then the government takes it. Right. So what you're acknowledging then is that the, your, what you think is yours isn't actually yours and that the government rules over you by the threat of right. violence. And if you could take and something if you don't do what they'll say, then they'll steal all your stuff from you. Well, if, if right, but, that's, but that's, that, that's, that's, a different, that's a misinterpretation of property. What, uh, Wait a second. You've, you've misinterpreted it, though. Hang the on, fact Keith. Is, hang on. Hold that thought here. You we'll don't own something if somebody can come take it from you. That's what I just said. It, no, no, it? no, no. You're talking about stealing. The government's not really stealing. Not in Keith's world. In his world, the government can come take it from him. So therefore, the government must own it. Well, let's find out what Keith thinks about that here. Keith, you want to stick with us? You're welcome to 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. This is Free Talk Live. 
Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. This is Davi Barker from shinybadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at shinybadges.com, write worms in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. Lose the winter blues and warm up with hot flooring deals from Lumber Liquidators. Thinking about hardwood? Consider bamboo. We've got the number one brand, and we'll help you get it for less. Like Strand Bamboo. It's twice as hard as oak, and for a limited time, it's only $1.99. Why pay as much as $4.99 for bamboo at other stores? We've got deals on over 70 styles from an incredible $1.79. Plus, pre-finished hardwood, laminate, and more for less than half what you'll pay somewhere else. And 18 months special financing. Now is the time to warm up your home with new floors. So visit LumberLiquidators.com to find a store near you. If the IRS has garnished your paycheck or seized money from your bank account. You need to get professional tax help now. Fast action is required to put a halt to these aggressive IRS collection tactics. You can count on the knowledgeable team of tax professionals at Wall and Associates. With over 30 years of experience, Wall and Associates has settled the tax problems of thousands of taxpayers for a small fraction of what they owed. For a free face-to-face -face consultation, call 1-800-425-4610 to put a wall between you in the IRS. 1-800-425-4610 or look for us on the web at wallandassociates.net. We solve tax problems. If you hire Walland Associates today, you'll never have to talk to the IRS again. To stop the levies and seizures today, take action now. Call Walland Associates at 1-800-425-4610. Wall and Associates. 1-800-425-4610. Based on actual cases, results may vary. Not a solicitation for legal services. Free Press Publications is an independent, alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website fpp.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com, and the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at FPP.cc. That's FPP.cc, as in Creative Commons. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at LRN.FM? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at LRN.FM. That's LRN.FM. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate, well, I know a guy who's really great. It's the realtor Mark Warden. Do you want a home with 20 acres, a lakeside cabin, any takers for renters, buyers and sellers too? Mark Warden is the guy for you. PorcupineRealEstate.com this is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at LRN.FM. This is Free Talk Live, and you may bring up anything you'd like toll-free, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And with you tonight in studio, it's Ian. Here. Derek J. And Mark. Don't forget to join us online at freetalklive.com. And if you want to get some silver and gold, please get in touch with Midas Resources over at gold.freetalklive.com. Once again, that's gold.freetalklive.com. We've got some great deals on some hand-picked gold and silver pieces. 
And you can call them toll-free as well, 877-857-9938. Or again, that's gold.freetalklive.com, 877-857-9938. And gold.freetalklive.com. Let's go and uh, we'll continue here with your thoughts. Uh, there's sort of still, a, I think, a decompression going on in the studio uh, after that last call. I did invite him to hang on. He dropped off during uh, the break there for the gentleman in North Carolina, but he was shocked. I mean, at, at what he was hearing on the air, and I think sort of you were also shocked, Derek J, by what you were hearing. I'm still feeling very tense in my muscles. I can feel it in my back. That conversation really it it, it raised my fight or flight mechanism. But I'm, I have to sit here in the studio and talk into a microphone, so it's, it's very difficult. You can't go anywhere. Yeah, it's very difficult to deal with that uh, because you know the, the question honestly didn't make any sense to me, and I think it's because I've been which question the the question would you support. Uh, troops defending your country if it were attacked and yeah. and there's so many layers of separation between the the philosophical worldview that I hold now and the one I held maybe 10 years ago where that question would have made sense to me like for example I don't believe in countries right. so like that that term doesn't even compute like, like when well, I hear it and I have to remember what it was like to believe that so a country is like an arbitrary border right so let's say sure. um, someone at, decided I some talked point. about Mexico rolling tanks into uh, Texas. Now, I don't believe this is going to happen. I'm just talking about... By Mexico, you mean the government, the people calling themselves the government I did talk about flags, Mexican flags being on tanks. And mostly... The government's the ones that own tanks. So yes. Mexico's either a plot of uh, land on a map, or it's the people calling themselves the government who would then have tanks. Mostly in this world, we collapse those two terms. It's a problem. Right. Like, the government is the land. But it's and not. And it's not, obviously. Dirt isn't people, and people aren't dirt. Whenever I've been prosecuted in court, it's never been by dirt. Right. Yeah. So it's very difficult to uh, to have these conversations. But, like, I, I can see how if troops rolled in, Mexican troops rolled into Texas, that some people would say, we must fight, uh, to, you, know, ev- you know, we from Montana must fight to protect Texas or whatever. And I can get why they would choose that. I may not be willing to get in my car and drive down there with uh, a gun in order to protect uh, Texas. By the way, the United States government prevents me from owning a gun, so my protection, I'd probably have to go out with a machete to protect you from the tank because the government says that I'm too dangerous to own a weapon. But that's beside the point. But I might be willing to, uh, you know, drive northward if Canada decides to invade the northern part of uh, Vermont or New Hampshire in order to protect. It's just a, I think it depends on your boundaries, your geographical boundaries of where you're willing to do the protecting you're willing to do, right? I, I, the well, it's all arbitrary. boundaries, right? I mean, what you're talking no. about is arbitrary. So you're saying that – so, like, let's – I don't want to put words in the gentleman who was uh, last on with us, but let's just say – that he believes in this thing called the United States. He clearly did. And so therefore, if uh, someone in a tank attacks someone in the southwestern, he was in North Carolina, so if somebody in a tank attacks somebody in the southwestern corner of Alaska, he's willing to, you know, get behind an effort to roll in tanks on the other side and, you know, try to kill everybody. Well, and, and your area of influence is more like maybe New England or New Hampshire well, I'm talking or about what I'd like be that. willing to do but I'm un- living I live in the real world where we have an organization of people that are supposed to protect us called the United States military and it is a very powerful organization it is the most powerful military the planet has ever seen so I don't propose but they aren't obligated to protect you well, okay. Um, they're going. They're they're obligated to um, you know, follow the orders of politicians who, uh, who are going to benefit from protecting us to some extent, right? Like they're not going to be politicians if this land gets taken over by somebody else. Okay, maybe they're the ones that are going to die first. They're going to be lined up and shot on walls. Still, they're not obligated to protect you. Their, I understand the Supreme Court the has ruled that, uh, that the government doesn't have any obligation right. to protect you. I'm clear on that. If protect, and they're going to protect their bases. Strategically, if they wanted to blow up my house because they thought some bad guy was in it and they'd accidentally blow up my house and my kid, they would do that because that's what their, their role is. I understand that they do not consider me to be much of an asset. I am simply a tax animal, mm-hmm. uh, tax livestock to these people. I get that. Yeah, and you don't I'm, even pay those taxes, so they really don't care about it. I'm you. clear on that, and but what I'm saying is, is that I I wouldn't propose I don't just because somebody joined the military to protect uh you know protect America or whatever I don't think they're bad people, but they get put in situations where they can do nothing but bad stuff. There's mm-hmm. really only bad options that they're given, and I'm not going to 
if forget I'm not going to just go ahead and brush that to the side, but at the same time, I'm not going to just blanket say everybody who's ever done this is a bad person. You're bad if you've I done I wouldn't say that either. You're you're guilty of what you have done wrong and you're not guilty of what you have not people done wrong. People can change and we have people within the liberty movement who were in the military and they, you know, changed their minds later on about what they'd done. And that's fine. That's fine. They don't think Derek was indicting them, and I don't think no, I don't think he was. I just want to be clear. The guy I called in because he's frustrated. He's frustrated because he just wanted to understand. Derek is talking an almost entirely yeah. He wants to understand. That's why he called in. Yeah. And Derek is talking almost an entirely different language from what he's saying. Mm -hmm. We use terms that talk about these fictitious organizations known as governments because they have been with us for nine thousand years. Everybody understands them. But they're organizations that operate by force and coercion. The all the people, all the stuff, and all the people in the military are paid for by stole by theft. Because if I don't pay my taxes, mm-hmm. they're going to come throw my butt in jail. Good chance There's they a only of that, they yeah. claim that money, the fruit of my labor, based on their belief that they own me. And That's my correct. interactions and, and it the seems other that people the caller I believe with. that they, that he is owned as well because he did acknowledge they would come take the stuff that he thought was his. I don't know whether he, he – um, that's just the – he's using terminology that he's used to. Mm-hmm. The fact that he doesn't live in the libertarian bubble of Keene, New Hampshire um, with the people that we live with and you know talk the way we talk in our culty little uh, libertarian language. I don't think it's culty to be more accurate with your terms. Cult uh, jargon usually has to do with – obscuring an idea or coming up with a, a term to, uh, I, th- I guess, more encapsulate a larger idea. Usually libertarians are in, are attacked because we're using terms that are more honest, so like stealing or extortion instead of taxation. The cult term there is taxation. Just because people believe in that word and people I agree have with you. used that word doesn't mean it's not the cult term. Kidnapping is what an arrest is. Arrest is the euphemism for kidnapping that the people who support the state have layered in on top to justify the actions that they do that would be kidnapping if any of the rest of us did. If we put on a uniform with a badge and we went over across the street and took somebody out of their house and put them into our little cage, that would absolutely be kidnapping. But yet when the people calling themselves the state do it, then it's an arrest and everybody gets to get all bent out of shape when we call it kidnapping and accuse us of being the cultists. Sorry, doesn't apply. I agree with you 100%, but if 99% of the population um, is looking at something one way and then 1% is looking at it another way the 1% is generally going to sort of lose the battle for hearts and minds that's I, right that's I, why gonna... the libertarians have lost for so long is why they need to join the free state project at freestateproject.org and start the plan immediately to move to new hampshire as soon as it is feasibly possible uh, for you to do so economically, to to get up here and to get into a community of people who actually understands these ideas. I think that's so, so important. Now, I want to come back, Derek J., because there's more about this Chris Kyle, this American sniper, but Aaron has been waiting patiently here in Philadelphia. You're on Free Talk Live, Aaron, via Skype. Go ahead. Hey, Ian, Mark, Derek J. Hey there. Hey. Um, I was calling because you said something about supporting the contractual agreement between the government and soldiers. Yes. It seems to me that uh, it's you're talking about the government as an individual, when in reality it's a group of people contracting this this incentive to become a soldier on the behalf of the tax cattle. Well, I don't think that they um, – okay, so look, look at how Free Talk Live gets it from both ends. I'd like everybody to step back for a second. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we get, we get one guy calling in from West Virginia and saying, what are you, let me get this straight. You don't could support the hey, troops. He was from North Carolina. I'm sorry. It was – I thought he was from West Virginia. No, Carolina. Uh, either way, um, and and I understand where he's coming from. I get it. Um, and then we have you know the the the, the libertarian uh, half scholar calling in and saying, "Now let me get this straight." <laughs> <laughs> so we get it from both sides, and uh, it's it's kind of funny. Um, the United States government is an organization, whether it funds itself properly or improperly. It doesn't actually represent the tax cattle. 
So if that organization makes a contract with somebody, that organization should be responsible for paying it off. That organization has assets and could choose to pay off everybody that has a claim, Social Security, uh, whatever. Yeah, that was the old soldiers. Harry Brown plan, right? Uh, Harry Brown, the presidential candidate in the year two, uh, 2000 and 1996 for the Libertarian Party, was to take a wrecking ball to the IRS building and then sell off chunks of the building at the highest bidder <laughs> like to people just as like to have a memento and also, of course, to sell all the other buildings that they buildings, had and parks, use that they money want. to sort of pay off the people that they have made these agreements with. Uh, I don't know if that answered your issue, Aaron. You're welcome to hang on. If it didn't, more coming up here in moments and more about the American Sniper. Maybe we'll talk about the Silk Road case. It's all on the way in Free Talk Live. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. Majid lives in Nordavin, Armenia, with his wife, kids, and grandkids, all in the same house. They have cows, but to compete against the big ranchers, Majid needed to get a loan for more cattle. Free Talk Live helped him get a loan for the cows. He bought them, and now he's very happy with the expansion of his farm. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference, one cup at a time. Get a free pound to try out the subscription. Cancel at any time. Coffee.freetalklive.com. Are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency. Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you are helping the state. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available now. Learn it, use it, spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at weusecoins.com. That's weusecoins.com. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Monday, January 19th, 2015. Silver is trading at $17.79 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,278 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $211. Antiwar.com reports, according to a spokesman for Russian President Vladimir Putin, his Ukrainian counterpart, Petro Poroshenko, rejected a proposal to move forward with the peace process between the Ukrainian government and the Eastern rebels. The proposal was a fairly modest advance on the current ceasefire, calling for both sides to withdraw heavy artillery away from combat areas and into areas where they would would not be so conveniently used. Russian officials said that not only had Poroshenko rejected the proposal, but that he had almost immediately ordered a new round of offensives in the southeast, which Russia warned violated the Minsk agreement already in place. Both Russia and the OSCE have called for a return to calm, but it seems that the ceasefire is tottering after months of relative calm, with fighting in several places, including the rebel capital of Donetsk. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. 
UPI reports, according to a new study, people who work 48 hours a week or more are likely to drink alcohol more heavily. The study looked at data from over 330,000 people in 14 different countries. It found people who work more than the average work week were 11% more likely to engage in heavy drinking. Heavy drinking is considered 14 or more drinks per week for a woman or 21 or more drinks per week for a man. Considering the study analyzed people from 14 countries, 11% translates to 2 million people drinking heavily because of their jobs. The team of researchers wrote, The workplace is an important setting for the prevention of alcohol misuse because more than half of the adult population are employed. Further research is needed to assess whether preventative interventions against risky alcohol use could benefit from information on working hours. The study was published by the British Medical Journal. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Coinbase. Coinbase is a simple and secure online Bitcoin wallet for sending, receiving, and storing Bitcoin. Coinbase also allows you to buy and sell Bitcoin using a bank account or use their tools to accept Bitcoin as a merchant. All of your funds on Coinbase are safe, with approximately 90% of customer funds being stored offline and all wallets are stored using AES-256 encryption. I trust Coinbase. You should too. Get started at coinbase.fppradio.com. That's coinbase.fppradio.com. The LA Times reports President Obama will focus on middle class economics in his State of the Union speech Tuesday, unveiling a message designed to challenge newly empowered Republicans on economic policy in the final two years of his presidency. White House advisor Dan Pfeiffer said in an interview on CBS's Face the Nation on Sunday, it's the simple position that now that the economy is in a stronger place than it has been in a very long time, we need to double down on our efforts to deal with wage stagnation and declining economic mobility. The White House has already released the policies it hopes to use to frame the debate. On Saturday, officials said the president would call on Congress to raise taxes on top earners and impose a new fee on large financial firms to pay for tax credits aimed at low- and middle-class families. The $320 billion in new revenue would be used to pay for expanded higher education benefits, child care tax credits, and retirement programs. Pfeiffer acknowledged the plans aren't tailored to appeal to Republicans who took complete control of Congress. Congress this month. Are they going to agree on everything? He asked. Absolutely not, but I think we should have the debate in this country between middle class economics and trickle down economics and see if we can come to an agreement on the things we do agree on. Republicans quickly rejected the White House's proposal. Senator Marco Rubio from Florida, also speaking on Face the Nation, called the president's tax plan an outdated model that no longer works in the 21st century. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Coming up a little later, the 10 best careers for someone at your level of attractiveness. Oh, but right now we have something truly incredible for you. Kenneth Quinn is a real-life psychic medium who claims that he can communicate with dead acquaintances. He's written a new book. It's called Small Talk from Beyond, Speaking with Distant Relatives and Friends of Friends Who Have Passed. Hi, Good Kenneth. Good to see you. Now, Thank Kenneth, you. you've written that you're able to connect people with the spirits of their old college professors or roommates that they didn't really know that well. When did you realize that you had this gift? Well, it was the day after my cousin's friend's wife's funeral. I was at home and I suddenly felt a presence in the room with me. And I heard a voice say, it's Vicki. Vicki Solchek, Dale's wife. Wow. We made a Tim's birthday thing a while back and we talked about how hard it is having a cat. Fascinating. This has been so amazing. This has <laughs> been fabulous. Thank you, Kenneth Quinn, for being our guest. Stay with us because coming up next, we're gonna show you how to lose some of that excessive weight by constantly picking at your skin. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. You may dial in toll-free. We're here, and you can take control of the airwaves to bring up anything you'd like. We've been talking about The American Sniper. It's a new movie, been taking box offices by storm, apparently shattering records. And Derek J., you're upset about all of this, and... This guy, oh. Chris Kyle, is his name? 
Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I, you know, it, it disturbs me a little bit that this is what uh, the people want. Of course, I'm always happy to see people succeed. You know, the actor should get a lot of awards for fine acting, and the director, and well, they should all be the rewarded movie, I mean. for money. Yeah, but I'm saying, you know, even from the trailers, I could tell this is uh, this is probably a great movie. But Clint Eastwood is a decent director for sure. Yeah. yeah. So I'm not saying like uh, shame on them or they don't deserve success. I'm just saying I, I want to make sure that the public knows this isn't real. Reality, there is a real man and he's not mm. a nice guy and maybe he wasn't as nice as he's made out to be in the movie because some of the statements you're saying here that he has apparently said uh, in this article from where is it again the uh, guardian the guardian they're citing you know he said certain things that sounded pretty bigoted sounded pretty awful calling uh people in the middle east savages for instance exactly and uh, he's uh being worshipped as a bit of a hero and anyone who sort of criticizes this man is being denounced as you know not a patriot or they hate their country and stuff like that and i just want to i just want to bring that to the table and talk about it a little bit i want to continue that discussion here in a moment and uh, we do have more from the guardian piece i yes. believe but first we also have aaron on the line because this brought up a larger conversation somebody called in uh, listening on talk radio 850 in north carolina talking about supporting the troops etc and aaron you uh were in the middle of something with mark and i'm not sure if everything got completed or you were able to really say what you were trying to, to say so go ahead um mark kind of brought up that the mil the, not the military, the government has uh, assets. But all the assets owned by the government were first purchased with stolen funds from the people. Therefore, the only right thing to do with sold assets should be to give it back to the people from whom it was stolen. Those people are dead. Which, <laughs> correct, but you could still give it to posterity. Dead people bequeath their assets to their posterity, supposedly. I agree with you. I think that there's, um, okay, so this is a difficult situation, um, and I think it's worth talking about, but we, it's also worth coming up with a position that is palatable to uh, those that, you know, may not understand these ideas entirely. And it seems to me that, uh, look, I have no problem with an organization making a contract with somebody, and if they make a contract with somebody for employment, that they should do the things that they say they're going to do. The idea that uh, you hire somebody into the military, and then, um, you know, once their term's over or whatever, you're just like, oh, you got some mental problems because of the fight? Well, uh, who cares? Uh, you know, whatever it is, I think that that's despicable behavior. And, and they do that now. And they do that, absolutely. Yeah. So uh, I think that the, the United States government, I think that I think the United States people are largely a bunch of uh, mouth-breathing hypocrites when it comes to the military. They say we want to support the troops, but they don't want to pay the taxes in order to do just that. So that I consider to be a real big problem. Um, but I see what you're saying, Mark. You're saying that uh, that whatever the solution should be for ending the state— that it should be something that assuages some of the concerns that people inevitably are going to have. Well, what about the people on welfare? Well, what about the people who are getting this, these military benefits? What about all the promises that the government has made? And even though these people all made contracts with a criminal organization, and you get what you get when you make a contract with a criminal organization, and, and the same thing even if you're not contracting with a criminal organization, if you contract with a gym for a gym membership and the gym goes out of business, sorry, your membership's invalid uh, at that point. And so you know, that if, if uh, the government disappears tomorrow and all of these people can't get their bennies, well, sorry. But I understand you're saying smooth it over, make it more uh, of an attractive presentation. That makes sense. Well, anyone who's asking the question, what will happen to the people if, uh, the, my answer is always, you'll help them. You're asking the question. You obviously mm. care. That's a good answer. Yeah. I mean, if people say, oh, what will happen to the people on welfare? Well, you'll help them. You're concerned about them. You're asking the question. Mm. So, I mean, obviously, we don't need uh, the government to solve these problems if you're already concerned and willing to put in the effort to help people. Aaron, any other thoughts you want to share tonight? I just want to put out there that people might not be so kind if it were the mob asking for health insurance for its enforcers from the store down the street. Thanks for the call tonight. I appreciate it. Thank Toll you. free number is 855-450-FREE. And by the way... Uh, Aaron was calling via Skype. That's why he sounded better than uh, the gentleman on the phones. You can also upgrade your call quality to Free Talk Live. Just use you know, Skype on your favorite smartphone and use uh, connect to username lrn.fm. You do have to send a contact request first, and we will approve that. It'll keep Ian's hair from growing gray. I mean, the guy just obsesses about sound quality. It's his, uh, it's his passion. Thanks. So going on, Derek <laughs> J., 
Lindy West continues in the Guardian article, however we diverge politically, I have enough faith in Eastwood's artistry and intellect to trust that he's not a black and white ideologue, or at least that he knows that the limitations of such a worldview would make for an extremely dull movie. Eastwood claims to be a libertarian. Interesting. Yeah. Yep. But the same can't be said for Eastwood's subject. You know, I want to step off for, for Eastwood here for a second. You remember how he got so much trouble in 2012 for having that uh, imaginary conversation with a chair? <laughs> no, I don't recall yeah, that. Yeah, that was great. Okay, so he, at the Republican National Convention, he uh, sort of interviewed Barack Obama, who wasn't there. It okay. was an empty chair. Ah. And the what I'm going to call the liberal media, and I'm not saying all media is liberal. I'm simply saying that there's liberal media out there, and I think that's undeniable. They sort of painted him as nuts and stupid and just a, a variety of things. And I thought this was it was ridiculous. What you had an opportunity to see here, uh, you know, sycophants, was one of the greatest actors of our time plying his craft in a really sort of, uh, y you got to see it in a very raw fashion. Yeah, because you know, it was ad-libbing too, I believe. Right there. With it all happening in a funny place, right? Like it would yeah. be difficult to stand up in this room full of all these people and just kind of do this thing that no one expected you to do in this way that he did it. I thought that, you know, agree or disagree with whatever what he was trying to do say um, in every single question, I certainly didn't agree with everything he said. Yeah, I don't think I, he's actually a libertarian. He's just one of those guys who calls himself that. Well, I think he's a libertarian-ish, and I'm a big yeah. tent guy. I'm willing to take anybody who uses the term, and uh, then I will talk to them about positions that I think that they may be anti-liberty on. Yeah. Um, I, I believe in using the term as a lever to push the ideas, um, and if somebody wants to use the term, excellent. We'll talk about where you're falling short when you use the term libertarian. Probably you won't be conver uh, conversing with Clinton, though, anytime. I, probably not. Yeah. I mean, but he yeah. could he could roll in here any old time, him. right? But I thought, anyway, I thought that that was a wonderful uh, little piece of uh, acting. So Clint Eastwood obviously sees the world in shades of gray, not as black and white as some folks, but Chris Kyle, it seems, does see the world in black and white. Mm -hmm. And so do many of his fans. As Laura Miller wrote in Salon, quote, in Kyle's version of the Iraq War, the parties consisted of Americans, who are good <laughs> by virtue of being American, and fanatic Muslims whose, quote, savage, mm. despicable evil led them to want to kill Americans simply because they are Christians. Yeah, it wasn't because the Americans were over there bombing them to death. No, that's not why. <laughs> there were any, any Americans that were killed by any Iraqis um, in, in that decade were killed because they were in Iraq. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, that that's really the problem. If you send a bunch of armed people over there and some of them get killed, you don't really get to get indignant about it. Adds Scott Foundus at Variety, quote, Chris Kyle saw the world in clearly demarcated terms of good and evil. An American sniper suggests that such dichromatism may have been the key to both his success and survival on the battlefield. Absolutely. Doubt and is akin to death. The, 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 the mindset of soldiers, sailors, airmen, marines, or whatever, that are dealing with their situation is a product of what it is that they're in a situation they have to do. Or have to. I think that mostly they have to do it. They could just choose to go to the brig, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Eastwood, on the other hand, Foundress says, quote, sees only shades of gray. An American sniper is a morally ambiguous, emotionally complex film. But there are a lot of Chris Kyles in the world, and the chasm between Eastwood's intent and his audience's reception touches on the old Chappelle's show conundrum. Mm -hmm. A lot of white people laughed at Dave Chappelle's uh, rapier racial satire for the wrong reasons in ways that may have actually exacerbated stereotypes about black people in the minds of intellectual underachievers. Hold the rest of that. We'll come back with more of the analysis. We're still at the Guardian, right? Yes. All right. We'll come back with that. And your calls are welcome here. Join in the discussion. And you don't have to be on topic. You can always bring up anything. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. And username lrn.fm on Skype. In a trial by jury, the primary function of a juror is not to dispense punishment to the accused. It is to protect your fellow citizens from being unjustly deprived of their life, liberty, or property. As a juror, you can say no to unjust laws and prevent government abuses of power by refusing to convict. 
legislative, executive, judicial. The fourth branch of government is we the people. Find out more from the fully informed jury association at FIJA.org. Majid lives in Nor Devin, Armenia with his wife, kids, and grandkids all in the same house. They have cows, but to compete against the big ranchers, Majid needed to get a loan for more cattle. Free Talk Live helped him get a loan for the cows. He bought them, and now he's very happy with the expansion of his farm. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference, one cup at a time. Get a free pound to try out the subscription. Cancel at any time. Coffee.freetalklive.com. Making the right decisions is a challenge to investors. Are we going to see economic growth, slide into a recession, or at worst, depression? Hi, Ted Anderson from Midas Resources. We all know when a company acts irresponsibly, divesting ourselves in a move towards safety is prudent. When the market becomes volatile, U.S. Treasuries are a safe haven. But what do you do when the U.S. government overextends itself and spends beyond its means? Many investors are turning toward gold as a common-sense alternative to traditional paper investments. Midas Resources has put together a powerful book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, discussing costs, benefits, risks, featuring full-color illustrations, weights, and measures. The book is free and can be yours by calling 800-686-2237. Paper investments are dwarfed by gold's 6,000-year history. Discover how gold may be right for you and your IRA by calling 800-686-2237. Whether buying or it's time for you to sell, the book is free. Call 800-686-2237. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on doing the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. You can help by joining the AMP program for just $5 a month at amp.freetalklive.com and getting perks. That's amp.freetalklive.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You are welcome to join us here on the radio to talk about whatever's on your mind. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. And, of course, you can join us via Skype at Skype username lrn.fm if you need the common legal documents uh, that you know, life seems to throw at us i mean you're just going to need some of these things you don't have to like it you just got to live with it they've got them at legalzoom.com and they've got them at very low rates over there comparative to say hiring an attorney now they're not attorneys but they were started by an attorney what they do is they ask you questions and then they fill out the document for you in that fashion uh, they make it fast easy, inexpensive. I've done my will over there. And if you don't have a will, you really need one. 
and the 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 list of things that they can do is just exhausting. So, for instance, divorces, immigration paperwork, bankruptcies, disability benefits, DUI, DWI uh, paperwork, wills, living trusts, trademarks, whatever you need, they've got it at LegalZoom.com. Use coupon code FTL to save ten bucks on your order. That's a nice little spiff for you. Coupon code FTL, as in Free Talk Live, at LegalZoom.com. All right. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. We've been talking about the American sniper, Chris Kyle, uh, and learning a little more about him. I didn't know anything really about the guy. I'd heard something about the movie existing, and I came into this entire episode totally ignorant. So, Derek J., thank you for uh, helping to explain the situation and to whoever the author is at The Guardian that you're citing. It's my pleasure. The article author is Lindy West, and he or she, I'm not quite Hard sure. Hard to say was, with that name. Was, Could be a male. Right. Was yeah. writing about, uh, in the last segment, about the Chappelle Show factor, about how you know, Dave Chappelle made parodies or caricatures of black stereotypes, and then a lot of stupid people watched the show and thought, yeah, that's what black people are like, and it mm. sort of reinforced these wrong stereotypes. I don't know whether I agree with that uh, assumption. Um, it I was, heard that was, was one just, of the reasons he quit doing the show. Well, it was just an example, so maybe that didn't happen, Mark, but the, the point that this author is trying to make is that Clint Eastwood took a character who is uh, probably a bad guy, but then made him shades of gray, like mixed in some moral ambiguity into he, in this, and so a lot of the people watching the film are like, rah, he was great, we love this hero. So the, the, the factor is the same. Right. I guess. I, okay. So what I don't agree with is is that you're going to do your art, whatever your art is, and people are going to interpret it in whatever way people interpret it. Yep, that's right. And I don't think that there's anything right, wrong, or indifferent about that. Um, that's just what it is. Hmm. You know, like if if your art is too high, is 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 too subtle for people, I don't think you should stop doing it based on that. Hmm. Well, well, we don't know how subtle this was, right? None of us have seen the movie. I've seen Chappelle. We're talking about Clint Eastwood, though, primarily here. According to the article, Lindy says, US, the U.S. right wing appears to have seized upon American Sniper with similarly shallow comprehension, treating it with the same unconsidered rah-rah reverence that they would the national anthem or the flag itself. Mm -hmm. Only a few weeks into the release... The film has been flattened into a symbol to serve the interests of an ideology that, arguably, runs counter to the ethos of the film itself. How much, if at all, should Eastwood concern himself with fans who misunderstand and misuse his work? And you say, Mark, not at all. If he, intentionally or not, makes a hero out of Kyle, who, bare minimum, was a racist who took pleasure in dehumanizing and killing brown people, is he responsible for validating racism, murder, and dehumanization. Well, I think that that's more interesting because um, in that at that point you're talking about art, but it's portrayal of real life. And if he minimized these things, then he's essentially lying. That's lying, not art. Uh, I mean, you know, like art well, you have artistic license to misuse and, and change facts don't I don't you, to make feel a that more way. interesting story. I never feel that way when you start using names of real people. But that's how you make a million bucks and make the biggest gotcha. grossing film ever. Well, I okay, just you. a point of uh, clarification here. It's only lying if you know you uh if you know what the truth is, right? So if Eastwood is presented a script, uh, did he write the movie? I I'm I don't know if he did. I doubt it, right? Like I don't know the answer to that it. question. Uh so if Eastwood is presented a script, and he reads the script, and it's about this, you know, heroic sniper who da 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 da, you know, and it doesn't mention any of the racist uh, right. aspects of this guy. Should Eastwood be responsible for doing his own research and trying to learn more about the subject of the movie that he's being presented with? Is hey, can you direct this? I think you should be able to do a re I think you're there's a reason if yes, if you're going to do weeks and weeks on set directing something, you're responsible for a few hours worth of research. Now, uh, this question also comes up on Free Talk Live. For instance, I I manage the Facebook page uh, probably more than anybody, and I'll repost memes now and then that I see that I like. Mm -hmm. And in the course of years of managing uh, the Facebook page, I have reposted some memes that are incorrect. I remember uh, clearly th there was one that was comparing like a European police car to an American police car. Mm -hmm. And like the European police car was like covered in uh, bright, 
you know, fluorescent stickers and that sort of thing. And the American police car was black. Bas- was a black Dodge Charger. Uh-huh. And basically, the idea, the indictment um, of it was, is look, in Europe, police are obvious, and um, you know, they're here to help you. In the United States, they are revenue collectors disguising themselves as uh, people with more money than sense or something. Yeah, I'm not sure what they, um, what the idea is. is not. All the Dodge Charger people out there, I love your car. I just wouldn't pay the kind of uh, money for it and the gas uh, mileage on it. But, um, yeah, so, I mean, I, I, I felt bad when, when somebody showed me, you know, posted a rebuttal to that. I didn't, didn't know exactly what to do. I never know what to do um, in those circumstances because this really does happen. Sometimes these memes will get hundreds of thousands of views. Should I pull it down if it's inaccurate? I don't know the answer to that. Hmm. I mean, anybody who wants to look at the meme can just go ahead and read the thread. The top comment says, this is bull crap. You know, <laughs> I, mean, and I, I basically what I do in those circumstances is I like the response that debunks the meme, but I don't pull it down. Well, you can also make an edit. Uh, that would be something. Yeah, that's an idea. I think I have done that, too. Yeah. That is essentially the question that this author is asking. Is he a propagandist, Clint Eastwood, if people use his work as propaganda? That question came to the fore last week on Twitter when several liberal journalists drew attention to Kyle's less Oscar-worthy statements. Quote, Chris Kyle boasted of looting the apartments of Iraqi families in Fallujah. Wow. What a guy. Quote, kill every male you see. What a... Yeah, that, it sounds, like, it sounds like the uh, the terrorists in uh, Paris last week. Hmm. That's what they were saying. Well, they weren't killing the women. They did kill one, but um, it was their, not in their intention. So those are his statements. Retaliation from the right wing Twitter sphere and was swift and violent, as a collect documented in an exhaustive post on Alternet. Quote: Move your America hating butt to Iraq. Let ISIS <laughs> rape you, and then cut your. Parts deleted off. head off. Okay. Effing media. Plenty of Muslim. American soldiers. There's a lot of words right. I can't say. Plenty of American soldiers who've committed rape as well. I'd like to point that out. Well, I also think that this is really just the the the, 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 the s- most simple of arguments is you don't like America and it's a flag and it's soldiers. Well, get the hell out. Yeah, but the, what, the interest- what the heck is that? The thing about Twitter is you can tell the person who wrote this is a rather unassuming looking mom named Donna. <laughs> 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 it's Donna can still be a simpleton. Yeah, we'll come back with more here, and your calls and thoughts are welcome. 855 450 free, 855 450 3733. More on the American Sniper coming up on Free Talk Live. Worried about getting sick and feeling terrible for days or even weeks? You need Immudine for a healthy immune system. Why get sick and bother with products that just don't work? For just a dollar a day, Immudine is all natural and safe for all lifestyles. Call 866-257-8668 to buy now before it's too late, before you get sick. Or go to immudyne.com, immudine.com, or call 866-257-8668. This is Dan Pillett. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands, and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement, and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpillett.com. Bewildered paralegal Caitlin Levy says that after returning home from work today, it occurred to her that oddly at no point during her day was she harassed, leered at, or made to feel humiliated or physically threatened. It's weird. Looking back on it, I suddenly realized that not one strange man made a creepy comment at me or an obscene gesture or a sleazy look for like the whole day. How can that be? The 29-year-old told reporters that even at points in her day when she is traditionally almost certain to be made uncomfortable by at least one or two leering male strangers, not a single such instance occurred. I actually got to walk from the train to my office and never once catch some weirdo smiling at me or looking me up and down or slowing down his car to yell some shit out the window at me. I felt weirdly 
safe or something. This is the Onion News Network. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. This is Davi Barker from shinybadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at shinybadges.com, write worms in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keen. Keen is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keen. Keen is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, dial toll-free to take control of the airwaves here. 855-450-FREE, the live edition of Free Talk Live. It's a holiday for some people, but we don't take days off here. We're here 365 days a year with live content, three hours a night. And, of course, if you're not able to listen live, you can always listen later on at your leisure at freetalklive.com. Something else you can do through our website is hook yourself up with a free pound of some of the best coffee out there from BuzzBox. Yeah, this coffee is shade-grown, 100% organic, top 1% grade Arabica beans. Uh, I challenge you to, you know, your money back for a free pound of coffee. <laughs> um, just go try it. It's some of the best coffee you're ever going to taste uh, at BuzzBox, uh, BuzzBox Coffee. It's at coffee.freetalklive.com. What they do differently, however, is they give us the opportunity to give money um, to, as in, in the form of microloans, a way to people who need it around the world. Uh, because human freedom's great, but you have to have something. <laughs> you have to be able to survive in order to enjoy it. So it's coffee.freetalklive.com. You pay the shipping on the pound, uh, but we'll uh, send it to you. You can cancel the subscription anytime. It's coffee.freetalklive.com. So did Clint Eastwood, in making this movie, American Sniper, know that this guy was a racist scumbag? Uh, that's one of the questions here. And th certainly the uh, story here at The Guardian And is should you never do a movie about a racist scumbag? Well, I mean, yeah, there have been some great movies about racist scumbags, like American History X, where the racist scumbag turns into a caring human being in, in that movie. I enjoyed that uh, that transition. But no, there's nothing inherently wrong about making a movie about a racist scumbag, as long as I think they're portrayed in the appropriate light. And if we're painting over a veneer of good guy hero on top of racist scumbag, that's certainly a problem. But whether or not he did it knowingly, I think, is another question, because if he did it knowingly, then he is engaging in deception. Uh, but if he just if he believed the stories that this guy was just some kind of hero soldier and he wanted to make a dramatic film about that, uh, then that's not the the same thing as purposefully misleading an audience. And, and we don't know. You know, we don't we don't have the ability to interview Clint Eastwood, um, nor you know, do I really care to. It's not like you called him today, though. You could have called. I don't know Clint Eastwood, Mark. I don't know his agent. <laughs> Sorry, that's not true. Anyway, going on. So what 
disturbed me so much about this film is the way people are reacting to it. And uh, we can see, like, this woman, Donna, on Twitter said some very vile things. Or to, someone claiming to be Donna. Right. Uh, so, but it's regular a first folks, name. <laughs> regular folks are saying some very nasty things uh, mm. to truth tellers who point out that Chris Kyle wasn't all good. And just another example. Oh, yeah. You can't point out that a hero, I mean, this uh, this hero could possibly be a f uh, fallible human being. Yeah. One man says, you know, we'll, we'll bring you over to ISIS and, and give you to them. Another person says waterboarding is far from torture, explained an oh, army pilot God. named Benjamin. Uh, I wouldn't mind giving you two a demonstration, he says. Wow. Then if, if it's... <laughs> Okay, whatever. The Patriots go on and on and on. They cannot believe what they're reading. They're rushing to the defense of not just Kyle, but their country. What their country means. They call for the rape or death of anyone ungrateful enough to criticize American hero Chris Kyle. And this is what I think that uh, is really the problem is, is that, I mean, this unthinking lockstep Mm. Uh, thought process that comes with, uh, you know, talking about one's country. This isn't just the United States, mm -hmm. but I think, but it seems like the United States might be a little more so than than other places. I don't know. I, I really don't know. Well, I've the never United been States Patriot. is certainly the most invasive of all the countries in the world. I mean, most so. successful at it. Yeah. I think that there are plenty of countries that would like to do it. Um, the United States has been successful at it, mostly because of sort of uh, geographic advantages and the way things went down in World War II. Well, whether true or not, in most people's minds, Chris Kyle is good and brown people are bad. Sick. And America is in danger, and Chris Kyle saved us. The attitude <laughs> echoes what Miller articulated about Kyle in her salon piece. Quote, his steadfast imperviousness to any nuance, subtlety, or ambiguity, and his lack of imagination and curiosity seem particularly notable. There's no room for the idea that Kyle might have been a good soldier, but a bad guy, or a mediocre guy doing a difficult job badly. Or a complex guy in a bad war who convinced himself he loved killing people to cope with an impossible situation. Hmm. Or a straight-up serial killer exploiting an oppressive system that, yes, also employs lots of well-meaning, often impoverished, non-serial killer people to do oppressive things over which they have no control. I have met people, um, more than one person in my life, that uh, has you know, talked about going into the military and... Uh, among the reasons that they mention immediately, in some cases, the first reason they give is Legal the ability killing. to kill somebody. Legally. Yeah. And that <laughs> that's kind of what's being talked about here. Yeah. No one's going to defend that. No patriot is going to go out and say, well, yes, that's a good thing, because that would I be— I don't know. Maybe some of them would. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I don't think so, but okay. What percentage? I wonder what the percentage is of people who join the military for that reason, for the reason of legal killing people. They can get away with it. How, what percentage? I don't know, um, and I don't know. I, I don't expect you to know, but I'm just wondering what people who in the military who have been around these guys, who presumably the longer you're around them, the more likely they're going to let slip with some of that information, that that's their reason for being there. I just wonder what the, you know. As a military person, if you're listening, what's your estimate is? Don't you think that some people um, would say that in sort of to, to psych themselves up, but they don't really mean it to? Like, I don't believe that everybody who says that sort of thing actually means it when they say it. I think that they don't really understand what killing means. They're 17 years old. Oh, um, I don't know about just that, Mark. I, on I don't know about that. I would say that anybody who makes a statement like, I'm joining the military because I want to kill people legally and get away with it. That sounds to me like somebody who likely has killed animals as uh, as a young person and is ready to move on up uh, the chain, so to speak. I don't think that anybody that answers that question in that way is anything but a psychopath. Um, because usually the typical answer of why you join the military is I want to de defend freedom and, you know, or my daddy did it or, you know, things like that. College. Or I wanted to go to college. But if somebody actually answers that question with, yeah, I want to legally kill people, th you've got a psychopath on your hands. I think that you, you should be careful as that you might have a psychopath on your hands. Um, I'm just saying that I don't think that everybody who says it means it. Wasn't that the answer from the comedian in Full Metal Jacket? Because I joined the military because I want to kill? The 
author of this article at The Guardian concludes, there's no room for the idea that Iraqis might be fully realized human beings with complex inner lives who find joy in food and sunshine and family. Family and feeling. They have feelings like yeah. everybody else. And they anguish the murders of their children. Or that you can support your country while thinking critically about its actions and its citizenry. Or that many truths can be true at once. Yeah, and I think that the killing of children, uh, like everybody can get that. Look, if you're not war, if they're savages, Mark. Uh, yeah, savages care about their children. No, no. What I meant is the people who call folks from the Middle East savages. I don't think they consider their children any good either, because they're all savages to them. They're monsters. They're subhuman. They're not people. They, uh, I don't know what they're thinking when they say that, but they probably still believe. If you ask a person who says that, do you think those savages love their children? The answer that they obviously have to give is, yes, I do. So when you send over your military who was looking for weapons of mass destruction, I was alive, I remember what the hell they were looking for. Yellow cake was the terminology. They didn't find any. That makes the war a mistake. When your mistaken war goes and kills somebody's children, do you think it's possible that that might turn them into a terrorist? It might mm -hmm. make them hate the people whose flag is on, you know, the, the the flag upon the shoulder of the military that's done that? For sure. Like, maybe that puts you in more danger? Maybe the foreign policy of the United States puts you in more danger? The article is over. The author concludes, always meet your heroes, and... I would agree with that, but yeah. it's just so sad. They usually don't pan out as uh, uh, as perfect as you thought they were. Well, nobody's perfect, and yeah. um, no hero uh, is that. Uh, I just think that we should portray them accurately as best we can. And the Iraq War continues. And if you did see this movie and you'd like to, I mean, so we're through the Guardian piece, but if you have seen this film, apparently quite a few people have, and you want to comment, feel free. Uh, the toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. I have no intention of seeing it, uh, but if you'd like to share your experience, you're welcome to do so here. There's more coming up on Free Talk Live, the latest on the Ross Ulbricht trace, uh, case coming up. And now from the Cato Institute, the Cato Constitution Minute. To our founders, regular elections were crucial since they would help ensure that government was responsive and responsible to the people. Yet our founders knew that democracy alone wasn't enough to protect liberty. At times, a majority can be as dangerous as a king or dictator, and so our Constitution limits the power of the majority. As Supreme Court Justice Robert Jackson wrote in 1943, one's right to life, liberty, and property and other fundamental rights may not be submitted to vote. They depend on the outcome of no elections. This principle is even more important today, with many of our laws not written by elected officials, but instead drafted or deeply influenced by outsiders who cannot be removed from office by voters. And so the Constitution limits government power because elections, while necessary for democracy, are not sufficient to protect freedom. To learn more, visit the Cato Institute online at cato.org. The knowledge of the ancients, tried and true, trusted herbs and extracts fused with the latest nutraceutical science. Introducing the all-new Ancient Defense Herbal Immunity Blend, crafted with over 14 key ancient herbs and extracts to supercharge and prepare your body for what experts admit is the most dangerous season of the year. We have rejected hundreds of other formulations in our quest to bring you what is simply the most powerful and comprehensive proprietary formula that we have ever created in the realm of herbal immunity. For the last two years, our team has been working with top doctors, nutritionists, and chemists to develop the ultimate nutraceutical formulation. Experience the benefits of combining over 14 ancient herbs and extracts with exciting new advances in nutraceutical science. Now is the time to secure ancient defense for you and your family. Visit ancientdefense.com or call 888-253-3139. That's ancientdefense.com. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's 
That's a problem, officer! Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at freeross.org. That's freeross.org. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything you want right here. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Join us online. Drop by freetalklive.com. And enjoy the features that are waiting for you there on the site. Once again, freetalklive.com. If you like the show and you like what we're doing on Free Talk Live, you want to help us get on more radio stations uh, from coast to coast and beyond, you want us to get more internet listeners on board with the show, then please become an amplifier for $5 per month. It's easy to do. You go to amp.freetalklive.com, sign up with any major credit card through PayPal, or use Visa or MasterCard right there on our website. And it helps Free Talk Live out quite a bit. And you get perks, too, like access to the AMP-only call-in lines, the AMP-only podcast, and the AMP-only forum, as well as the AMP-only Facebook group. Go get all the details and then get signed up. And thank you in advance. AMP.freetalklive.com. That's A-N-P. AMP.freetalklive.com. So last week, we spent quite a bit of time on the Silk Road trial, a.k.a. the Ross Ulbricht trial. First big bombshell of the trial was that in the opening statements, Ross admitted via his attorney that he actually did create the Silk Road point of fact, but then later claimed that the uh, he had abandoned the site. He left after it was too stressful, handing the reins over to someone else who was the Dread Pirate Roberts at that point. And then uh, the allegation was that somehow those who were running the site were able to lure him back in and set him up to take the fall for operating this underground marketplace, this infamous black market that has now been offline for over a year, um, coming up on, what, probably like 15 or 16 months since the original Silk Road takedown in 2013, late 2013. Of course, the replacement Silk Road, Silk Road 2.0, was also taken down and was infiltrated by the feds right from the get-go, as we found out. Well, yeah, but Silk Road was infiltrated, and the feds were some of the sort of admins there. That's correct, so which is how it, they were able to infiltrate Silk Road 2.0 from the get-go. If Ross Ulbricht was uh, lured back in, he was quite possibly lured back in by, by the, feds, the feds because Ooh, he would be yeah, the easiest be. person to pin this on or whatever their reason might have been. They had, in their minds, probable cause to go after Mark Kerpelis, the former CEO of... No, uh, Gox. Ma- yeah, yeah, MT Gox. And it, uh, but you know, they, for whatever reason, went after Ulbricht or whatever. I don't know what the, the, the case well, is. Well, I guess we're going to but- find out about that as, uh, as t- the case rolls on here because so far they're through maybe one witness at this point. I don't even know if the defense has finished with their cross examination of Agent Der Yegahan or whatever his name is. He's the first. Uh, He's the first witness from the prosecution, and cross-examination I don't believe is over, so that's going to continue. I believe the cross-examination was suspended, uh, and the case was ended last week temporarily for the weekend, this lengthy uh, holiday weekend. 
because essentially there was an objection from the prosecution. And that's where the story picks up from the DailyDot.com. The Silk Road trial took an unexpected turn last week when Ross Ulbricht, accused by the government of masterminding the entire operation, in turn accused former MT Gox owner Mark Carpellis of being the real man behind the online black market. Now prosecutors are urging the judge to strike much of the testimony provided by Special Agent Jared Deryegahan, who revealed the Carpellis connection during cross-examination. They claim much of the testimony was misleading to the jury and impermissible on several grounds in a cutting attempt to crack the defense's apparent strategy of pinning the charges on Carpellis, who has strongly denied the accusations of being the real Dread Pirate Roberts. I'm sure Russ Ulbricht <laughs> strongly denies them too, so what? Dread Pirate Roberts, or DPR, is the pseudonym of the person or person who are people who famously operated the Silk Road. Additionally, the government not only wants to stop all questioning of Der Yegahan regarding his previously held belief that Carpellis was the man behind Silk Road, but also aims to make sure any future testimony regarding Carpellis is much more stringently evaluated before being allowed in court. During cross-examination by the defense on Thursday, Der Yegahan said that his investigation into Silk Road led to Carpellis for some time. The prosecution says that despite Der Yegahan's investigation into Carpellis, no evidence was found despite obtaining a search warrant for the suspect's email inbox to corroborate suspicions that he was operating the Silk Road. I'd love to hear his answer to, do you still think that Mark Carpellis was Dread Pirate Roberts. I want to hear what Der Yegahan says to that, because he was married to the idea. He was the proponent of that. For quite a while. Yeah, yeah. and very easily, this username, Dread Pirate Roberts, because it's not a person necessarily, it's, a, it's an account. It could be more than one person. Right, it's an account um, on a website. So it could be operated by more than one person. For instance, uh, on our Facebook page, Free Talk Live's Facebook page, like a dozen people can post con con content to the Facebook page. It usually says, I think it says that the person's name who posted it sort of in light gray if you really look. But it looks for all the world like Free Talk Live, the entity. has. Yeah, you uh, only see it if you're an admin. You don't get to see the names that so? if you're the, the average user. Is that so? That's correct. Okay. And the Dread Pirate Roberts name in particular, and I haven't seen The Princess Bride, but apparently it's from this movie. You where haven't the, seen The Princess Bride? I, I know. I'm shocked by that. Inconceivable! <laughs> anyway, it's it's one of these names that gets handed down from person to person. So Correct, the, the, the name itself yeah. is suggestive that it could be any number of people. Not well, just one person. Correct. Okay, you need to watch The right, Princess Bride <laughs> this week. Really, <laughs> it's really important. It, 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 I mean, to so, it's it's the it, it's the fountain from which so many sort of ideas uh, come. I mean, it's just a it's, it's a an fun incredible. Movie. It's, it's a an fun movie. it's a fun movie, but it's an important one too. So the prosecution uh, says that despite Der Yegahan's investigation, no evidence was found. Despite obtaining that search warrant, Der Yegahan found no connection between Carpellis and the servers operating the Silk Road Market, say prosecutors. And the connection between Carpellis and SilkRoadMarket.org was tenuous at best. Like any web hosting service such as Amazon Web Services or GoDaddy, Kaylee Host leased server space to its customers for them to use in setting up their own websites, says prosecutors. I presume this Kaylee Host is something that Carpellis was involved with. Oh. Uh, the fact that the defendant used Mr. Carpellis's web hosting service, yeah, so there you go, uh, to host the SilkRoadMarket.org website turned out to be the only connection that Der Yegahan found between the website and Mr. Carpellis. This is the claim from the prosecution in their motion uh, to suppress this evidence. So this is sort of this is the current legal, uh, I guess, approach that's in play. Carpellis. I love how the, they'll probably get it, too. The judge just seems to support the prosecution in everything it does at this point. But you can't— But the judge—I th I had heard that on day number three when this was introduced, that the judge did seem to move in the defense's favor on the initial objection on this. Now, I think that maybe the judge has allowed for the sides to write longer uh, explications as to why this information should or should not be allowed. But it's my understanding that, like, for the first time in this case, the judge actually ruled in favor of the defense initially on this mm. and allowed this testimony because the prosecution was claiming that this was somehow hearsay, even though it was the very same man, the agent that was on the, the stand, was being questioned about his own actions in the past. So we will see uh, how that pans out. Carpellis actually aided in the investigation of Ulbricht, according to prosecutors. After the defendant's arrest, Carpellis forwarded records relating to a suspicious MT Gox account holding an enormous amount of bitcoins. Investigators were later able to tie this account to Ulbricht, said prosecutors. 
The prosecution has the following specific objections to Thursday's testimony by Der Yegahan. First, the defense's line of questions, quote, focused on Der Yegahan's state of mind during his investigation. And Der Yegahan's beliefs are not evidence. Indeed, an agent's beliefs often rest on hearsay, hunches, or other information that is not in itself admissible. Well, then they can't be used as arguments against Ross Ulbricht. If they're just beliefs and hearsay, then the, dismiss the agent. He's incompetent to testify. Well, I think what they're going to say is that uh, with Ulbricht, they're presenting hard evidence. But with this Carpellis, it was just his belief system that he had no real evidence uh, to back his beliefs. Okay, so when does it become evidence? Uh, when when does a government agent's investigation no longer become his beliefs and a collection of information? Well, right. I think but that it's still evidence. clear that he was investigating him. That's a fact. But, but he had probable cause. And this is, I think, the most interesting part of this is that probable cause is, to most people's minds, pretty good evidence. But I think that the United States government probable cause just doesn't mean anything at all. It means <laughs> mm-hmm. suspicion. Second. A few key points were made about discussions between Carpellis' lawyers and law enforcement in Maryland. For instance, Der Yegahan testified that Carpellis volunteered to give up the leader of Silk Road in exchange for immunity from other charges. Hmm. The prosecution well, says I, this is I imagine hearsay. those charges had something to do with sort of the, you know, not filing the proper paperwork or whatever. Well, didn't Carpellis allegedly rip off a bunch of people at, the, well, at MT Gox? Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, The prosecution says this is hearsay, however, that because Der Yegahan was not directly present for these meetings, they are inadmissible in court. Well, then I think we should uh, – the fact that you can't come – that the state – excuse me, the, the, the defense is going to have a difficult time coming up with a witness that's going to verify this. See, this is why I hate the adversarial legal system. I want to know. Whether or not Carpellis was given, um, you know, immunity based on, uh, you know, whatever it is that he did for the government, I need to know that as a juror, as a person who's making a decision, I need to know that. But they obfuscate this stuff. They're a Mm -hmm. bunch of liars. I don't know. I mean, that's how we pronounce it down in the South. Liars. (laughs) We'll come back with more here. 855 450 free. Hour number three is on the way. Plenty of time for you with your calls and thoughts if you make your call to 855 450 free. It's free talk live. Safety, safety, safety. I'm saying it three times. Studies show you need to hear something three times to remember it. So remember, safety, safety, safety is important to me, me, me. That's why I love Granger. Granger has the products to help keep our facilities safe and people safer. Say it with me, kid. Safety, safety, safety from Granger, Granger, Granger. When you think safety, think Granger. Get it? Got it? Good. Call clickgranger.com slash safety or stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. This is Davi Barker from shinybadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at shinybadges.com, write worms in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. 
This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates. Online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Monday, January 19, 2015. Gold is trading at $1,280, silver at $17.80, and Bitcoin is trading around $210. Today's metal price is brought to you by Midas Resources Incorporated, helping clients convert their paper 401ks and IRAs to solid gold and silver. Get their 10 Reasons book free by calling 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. How much food is in your pantry right now? Could you feed your family for two weeks, one week? Could you feed them for even three days without any help? Keeping an emergency food storage kit is the most effective way to begin to ensure your family's well-being during an emergency. eFoods Direct is food security for whatever the future holds. Go to eFoodsDirect.com slash Liberty Beat or call 800-620-5520 to learn more about food security in a time of crisis. In the news, four years before the White House blamed North Korea for a cyber attack on Sony, the U.S. government was reportedly hacking the country's computer system. In 2010, the National Security Agency began the operation, according to the New York Times, in a report published Sunday, which cites newly disclosed NSA documents. The NSA was able to infiltrate many of the computers and networks used by North Korean hackers and provided evidence that Kim Jong-un's computer wizards were behind the hack of Sony's email system. Sources told the Times. The evidence gathered by the software hidden to monitor North Korea's activities proved critical in persuading President Obama to accuse the government of Kim Jong-un of ordering the Sony attack. The controversial Transatlantic Trade and Investment Partnership has faced resistance from critics who say the deal would allow multinational corporations to override national laws that protect the environment, consumer rights, and food standards. The so-called investor-to-state dispute settlement has been suspended after 150,000 objections in a European Union consultation exercise. The ISDS would protect foreign investors from decisions by national governments. The Trans-Pacific Partnership, another international trade deal, has also faced heavy scrutiny from the public. The Justice Department will not consider proposals to spare the life of Shokar Zarnaf, one of the alleged bombers of the Boston Marathon. That's according to a report from the Associated Press. The trial to decide what punishment Zarnaf should face will begin in late January. Today's broadcast of the Liberty Beat is sponsored by My Magic Mud. Detoxifying tooth powder, the most effective and affordable dental care around. Get a 150 application jar at MyMagicMud.com. Want to reach tens of thousands of like-minded listeners every day with your messenger product? The Liberty Beat is looking for sponsors for their daily news service. Support this grassroots media project while expanding your reach to a targeted market. To find out more, go to TheLibertyBeat.com slash advertise. This is The Liberty Beat for Monday, January 19, 2015. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. On January 12th, Swiss authorities seized an automated bot called the Random Darknet Shopper, which was programmed to buy products from the Agora Marketplace on the deep web. The bot was part of an art exhibit in Switzerland, exploring the implications of robots breaking the law by purchasing from the deep web. The Darknet Shopper spent $100 in bitcoins per week, purchasing counterfeit jeans, ecstasy pills, Nike sneakers, cigarettes, and the entire Lord of the Rings series of novels. Agora and other sites on the deep web can only be accessed by special browsers such as Tor. During his State of the Union speech on Tuesday, President Obama will announce a plan to close tax loopholes. The White House says Obama will call for an end to certain loopholes on trust funds, increases in the top tax rates on dividends and capital gains, and impose new fees on financial firms that borrow heavily. Other changes include requiring businesses to automatically enroll employees into individual retirement accounts. The White House proposal would also include tax breaks for families with two working members, child care, and paying college tuition. The Liberty Beat is made possible with the help of Central Texas Gunworks, your online source for firearms, firearm accessories, and ammunition. They take major credit cards and now accept Bitcoin. Visit them online at shop.centraltexasgunworks.com. Support also comes from the Conscious Resistance Network. Videos, news reports, and articles from a spiritual anarchist perspective. Experience the Conscious Resistance at theconsciousresistance.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Monday, January 19th, 2015. Make sure you check out our website at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan reporting. Reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. 
This is the Onion Week in Review. In a landmark 5-4 to four decision issued this Wednesday, the Supreme Court ruled to allow Americans to cram cash directly into politicians' mouths. The ruling, which effectively eradicates former prohibitions against stuffing checks and stacks of $100 bills straight down the throats, ears, and other orifices of presidential and congressional candidates, is expected to fundamentally alter the ways American politicians have large quantities of money shoved right into their bodies. In football music news this week, the 1985 Chicago Bears reunite to record their first new material since the Super Bowl shuffle. The group says the new material will be darker and more introspective than its shuffle era work. And in this week's op-ed pages, a man asks why, if God exists, doesn't he throw us like a really f***ing sweet party? In other news, an increasing number of men feel pressured to accept realistic standards of female beauty. FedEx confirms that more than 600,000 people try to mail themselves each year. And a recovering alcoholic doesn't need friends to have a good time. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up what you'd like. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We have talked for most of the show about the American sniper and some of the issues surrounding that. You're certainly welcome to bring the conversation back to that if you'd like to. Uh, But also we're sort of moved on into the Silk Road universe now with Ross Ulbricht trial uh, continuing tomorrow, uh, tomorrow morning in Manhattan which is where you were about a week ago today, Derek J. You were awaiting the beginning of this trial. It's expected to last four to six weeks, and week number two kicks off in the morning. So we're kind of updating you on you know, what's going on behind the scenes, what's the legal situation wherein the prosecution has filed what appears to be some sort of a motion with the court to suppress the defense's evidence here, the defense case thus far. And it, defense defense hasn't put on its case. They're just cross-examining, and the prosecution's objecting. You know, they can't have the defense asking questions of the prosecution's star witness about what the star witness believed about the Silk Road prior to him believing that it was Ross Ulbricht who, who was in charge. He was investigating Mark Carpellis, who is the administrator of a different website, MT Gox, which is sort of one of the more infamous failures in the Bitcoin universe, where Carpellis is alleged to have bilked people out of, I don't know how many Bitcoins, but a lot of Bitcoins, like a major scam operation. So as you might imagine, there are a number of people who, when they found out that Mark Carpellis may be the Silk Road administrator who was perhaps threatening to kill people, that that might fit his personality more than it would fit Ross Ulbricht's personality. Yeah. So it's kind of been an interesting uh, twist in the case already, and we're only through the first week here. Uh, We'll continue with this. Let me just read the last couple paragraphs here on this Daily Dot story, and then we'll go to your phone calls and thoughts here. But they're talking about the prosecution's witness, Der Yegehan. He's one of the investigators, the the prime investigator on the case who spent, you know, thousands of hours and spent taxpayer money to buy and sell drugs on the Silk Road in order to integrate himself into the community there to where he was then able to take over an administrative function. After they busted one of the administrators, he subsumed that uh, administrative role on the site and ultimately was likely the very same agent who ended up infiltrating the second Silk Road website from the very beginning. Um, so the defense, says the prosecutors, is seeking to use the statements by Der Yegehan about investigating Carpellis for an improper purpose, say the prosecutors, to falsely suggest to the jury that Mr. Carpellis had inside information about Silk Road or sought to obtain immunity from prosecution for involvement in Silk Road when neither suggestion is true. Finally, the prosecution says the court should only allow theorizing about an alternative perpetrator if the defense can make a, quote, substantial direct connection because otherwise uh, such evidence poses serious risks of confusing and misleading the jury. The judge in the case has not yet made a decision on these objections and the trial resumes tomorrow. So, yeah, of course you want to confuse the jury. That's the intention, right, to make sure that the jury knows that there's a reasonable doubt that uh, this Dread Pirate Roberts account was being operated by just one man, that that it was Ross Ulbricht as the only person behind it. That is something the jury would like to disabuse, the, uh, d- the defense would like to disabuse the jury of, that particular notion. I think that that's, uh, that seems to be what the whole court thing's about. I right. mean, you know, if we really wanted to get to some kind of truth here, it'd be an entirely different situation. I don't like the adversarial system that we have. Um, Even if one claims it's the best on the planet, that doesn't make it good. The Mm -hmm. best form of cancer stinks. I so expected the strategy of the defense to be, 
yeah, Ross Ulbricht made the Silk Road and it made the world a better place. And look at all these drugs. Don't you want to go home and go buy some yourself? <laughs> that I was shocked by this uh, strategy of just casting doubt. Like this is the standard strategy of a sure. defense attorney is to be like, oh, look, you, you can't really pinpoint it on my defendant. It could have been in millions of other people. It could have been this guy. But um, it's actually working. It seems like a great strategy. I am like all in for the defense. Go team. Well, it was interesting watching uh, John Bush from the LibertyBeat.com and his kind of recap of uh, of what had happened, where he was talking. I think it was with Michelle Seven, or no, actually it was his interview of uh, Lynn Ulbricht. I think it was that is available on WatchMyBit.com. Uh, John had sort of he was in the courtroom when this was happening, and he said there was a major shift in kind of the the feeling of the courtroom. Like I don't know how you can really categorize what that is right but the the the, the feeling of the, the the atmosphere changed and shifted on day number three when these allegations started coming out from the defense and from der Yegahan himself about that it might have been this other guy mark carpellis and that the, the jury you know the way they were responding differently there were certain members of the jury who changed the the way they looked you know and that, that one of them was smiling as like like they were making a connection or something hmm. you know what, what 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 you want to draw from that i don't know but the the feeling in the courtroom and I, that wasn't the word he used the word that he used was better and i apologize i don't remember what it was but uh, it was kind of interesting just the, the shift in the way things felt there I guess we'll find out more as it goes on. We'll let you know as we learn more, because I intend to cover this as deeply as we possibly can here on Free Talk Live. It is the most important trial uh, in recent memory, uh, from my perspective at least. Let's go to Al. He's in Bangor, Maine, listening to WNZS. Al, you're on Free Talk Live. Gentlemen, all aspects of American culture are hopelessly corrupt. They're moribund. It's a dying civilization. No matter what we look, we have art, which is really scribbling, modern art. Music, rock and roll, which is noise. Art, which is no more than <laughs> filth. And it's done on purpose to... Uh, degenerate art is pushed on us to destroy and enslave our people. And the end result is Degenerate a art. Now, it was the other night, Al, that you were called... The most recent night, I think it was last night. Rock and roll. You called in to attack rock and roll... And tonight you're saying degenerate art, which, uh, well, what would you just defend or what would you describe as uh, degenerate? Like, what about a picture of a naked person? That degenerate? Well, primitive. Uh, well, a, a naked person can tend towards the ideal, as in Greek art okay. and Western art. It can be a kind of the sacred uh -huh. in which the divine and the human are merged. But I'm talking about art which deliberately distorts the human figure and doesn't give a realistic representation of anything. So like a picture of a uh, hall less, of mirrors would offend you then? Or it can make it better than what it is or it can make it worse. And America has chosen the way of making everything worse. And that's, what it, that's why it's become a very dark a dark place. And what I think mean, you are the most doom and gloom caller we have had in uh, in quite a long time on Free Talk Live, just consistently uh, the most well, gloomy of all callers. Although I have to give you credit, national, Al, I didn't expect for you to say that you'd be okay with nakedness in art. So we you know, have I'll national, give you points for that one. We have a national holiday. We need a national holiday, uh, which is opposite of darkness. We need uh, one which celebrates the final triumph of life and strength and beauty so that all this damage which has been done in the culture Martin Luther spirit, King Day seems like a fine day. I mean that's no, it's a, not. a great celebration of, of light no. and what about Thanksgiving? Beauty? If you continue to celebrate Martin Luther King Day, you will soon lose your freedom. What? Uh -huh. Now Martin Luther King, the statue in Washington D C that huge idol like uh, monolith made of granite, where was that made? Which statue? The statue. Some place they have granite. The monument. Yes. Where was New that Hampshire. made? I have no clue. Uh, which statue? Why? I didn't realize matter? there'd be a quiz. Which statue are we talking about? I'm sorry. There's a lot of statues. The huge statue of Martin Luther King. The big white okay. one. Yeah, it was made in communist China. The communist Chinese paid 25 million dollars to put that statue up. They couldn't find an American donor. We know that uh, King's top... Hold on a Wait, no one paid for that statue? Million. They, just, they just gifted it? 
I don't it understand. Was, it's a gift from the Chinese Communist government. Oh, that's very nice. $25 million. Yeah, that's that's awfully nice. What's wrong with that, Al? It's What's wrong with nice. it is that King was under the control, according to J. Edgar Hoover, of the communists. Now, okay. you had the liberals Robert Kennedy and John Fitzgerald Kennedy, brothers, who wiretapped King. Now, these weren't raving conservatives. These were liberals. Mm-hmm. And the reason why they wiretapped him is because his top advisor was the most trusted Soviet agent in the U.S. Now, this this guy who he edited— Is this a new Martin Luther King conspiracy, Mark? Have we, or, I don't think we've heard this the, one before. Have we heard? All, no. Hold, hold on, Al. I'll, I'll bring you back here in a moment. Mark, have we heard this one before with the, the Al— or that? Uh, Martin Luther King was a communist? That seems like a new one Well, he was me. certainly a socialist. He was. But that he was, like, controlled by the Russian uh, government and, like, some sort of double agent or whatever? That I seems to be to what he's proof. getting at. 855-450 free. More coming up. This is Free Talk Live. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist, libertarian community, and it's, it's only getting bigger. That's amazing. To be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do, though, is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying, let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com, 101reasonsfilm.com. Adam Miller here with Midas Resources. Today, January 19th, 2015, gold opened at 1276.40. A one ounce gold coin can be purchased for 1322.93, 661.47 for a half ounce, or 330.73 for a quarter ounce. That's 1258.35, 661.47, and 330.73. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. Have you ever wondered why banks, stockbrokers, investment advisors won't talk about gold IRAs? Wait a sec. Gold and silver is going up while Congress is trying to settle on the next debt increase. And there's no end to this madness. That old 401k and IRA can be converted into physical gold without tax consequences. I explain this in my book, 10 Reasons to Buy Gold. Don't let time slip away. Call for your free copy today, 800-686-2237. Get away from that Washington spin and get honest answers about gold. 800-686-2237. The book is free, 800-686-2237. Uncovering the secrets and exposing the lies. That's what the readers of freedomsphoenix.com get every day. FreedomsPhoenix.com, constantly providing the information, the real news about government policies, and the real relationship we all have with the coercive government. The real condition of the economy, innovations in technology, breakthroughs in energy, health, and computer science. Learn the truth well before it's admitted to in the lamestream media. The corporate media, nothing more than distributors of government propaganda, but now there's an alternative. FreedomsPhoenix.com. Constant news updates on the issues that affect your life in the most important ways. With liberty and property under constant attack, FreedomsPhoenix.com provides the understanding behind the propaganda, and it encourages the participation of its readers. Go to FreedomsPhoenix.com. That's Freedoms with an S, Phoenix.com. FreedomsPhoenix.com. The revolution between the ears has already happened. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Khalid lives in Gaza. He makes his living as a taxi driver. The engine in his old beater blew up. Now, he makes good money driving people in his cab, but he couldn't afford the $1,300 for a new engine. Free Talk Live helped him get a loan for the engine, and he's back on the road. You can help us help more people 
by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference, one cup at a time. Get a free pound to try out the subscription. Cancel any time. Coffee.freetalklive.com. You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. You can dial toll-free here. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE, 855-450-3733. You can join us online. Go to freetalklive.com and enjoy the features that we share with you. We'll go to your phone calls about whatever's on your mind. We've been talking about the Silk Road and the latest on the Ross Ulbricht case that we'll be continuing tomorrow morning in Manhattan. We'll give you more about that when we get the chance. But first, we're on with Al, and we're going to bring him back here in a moment. He is upset He's upset about the decline of civilization, and he is blaming it on things like rock and roll and art. Uh, but first, your privacy matters. If you care about it, you need to take the time to do something about it. And one of the things you can do to help you out with your privacy online is to go to proxpn.com FTL and download the free software provided by ProXPN. You can use it for Windows, Macintosh, iOS devices, and Android devices. Linux users, you can also get ProXPN working. It's a bit of a different setup process, but actually pretty simple. Go to ProXPN.com slash FTL. Get started with their free account. Try it out. And then you're going to want to upgrade because it is great service. And when you upgrade to the premium account, you'll get unlimited bandwidth and servers around the world you can access. You can privately torrent and get past regionally blocked websites. And ProXPN encrypts your data connection. So your internet service provider will no longer know what you're doing online. So it's very handy. ProXPN.com slash FTL. You get it all with a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee. And ProXPN doesn't keep records of your online habits. So once again, go to ProXPN.com slash FTL. Use code FTL50 to get 50% off the price of the annual account. Breaks the price down to around 5 bucks a month for this amazing service. ProXPN.com slash FTL. Code FTL50. It's a great discount on privacy that is priceless. So Al is back with us here in Bangor. Now, Al, you have brought out a claim here tonight that not only was the uh, the statue of Martin Luther King in New York, no, not New York, uh, Washington, D.C., a fairly large sculpture uh, brought or created here by, you called them the Red Chinese, I think, or the Communist yes, it, Chinese? It, it was sculpted in uh, Communist China. I, I Don't you think it was sculpted here in the United States by an artist from China? It would make more sense to sculpt it here than to have to transport this humongous uh, I think statue. that they, ex they, I think they outsourced it, from what I can tell. But I can tell you that the budget for it was a hundred million, not twenty-five million, as wow. he claimed. And I don't see any evidence the Red Chinese actually gave that twenty-five million that you claimed, Al. Yes, well, you can look in the FBI files, which are available online, and it very clearly states that King's top advisor was a man named Stanley Levison. Okay. Levison uh, was a member of the Communist Party of the United States of America, and he took bags of cash out of the Soviet Council in New York City to fund the Communist Party in the, in the United States. All he right, was that's an accusation. He was not only a communist, he was the most trusted Soviet agent, and he was the man uh, controlling King, writing his speeches, uh, etc. And Bobby Kennedy and JFK warned him to distance himself from the communists and refuse. At that point, they wiretapped him. And the FBI has enormous files on his uh, private life, which will remain sealed until 2027. The public won't be given access to them because, frank, quite frankly, they're obscene. What is the point of dragging Martin Luther King through the mud here? I mean, the man is dead, and why can't we just focus on the good things uh, that he did in life? It's like the people that focus on uh, well, Gandhi, you know, the bad side of Gandhi, right? Like Gandhi didn't. wasn't a perfect yeah. man. He uh, was, from what I understand, a little sexist, maybe even a little racist in some ways, but, uh, but he did a lot of good things as because well. Because he didn't do good to America. He did great harm. What's that? Was, What's the great he, harm that Martin Luther well, King did? Why would the communists... Uh, what was their agenda? Why would they want to control King with the marches and everything? The end goal... Well, they probably was, saw the uh, what was going to happen. Uh, I mean, you know, the fact is is that civil liberties were going to occur, and, you know, most people in America weren't standing up and making that happen. So, 
if some communists, and communists call themselves progressive, they wanted to see some progress going on, um, you know, I mean, that makes well, some no, sense to me. They're not interested in progress. They're a tyranny, which has killed over 100 million people in the 20th Well, sir, you have somebody who calls themselves a communist is not the same as the Russian government, or the, the, the uh, USSR government. The communists are not the uh, same as the, the government of the Soviet Union. Is it possible that a communist could Wait be a, a good second. person? Wait a second. He just asked a question. No, somebody who claims to be a communist is not the same as somebody who works for the USSR. The end goal of communism is global domination. No. The end goal of communism is for people to live peacefully together in, like, communes and not have money the, or something the like end that. Goal of, I mean, one of the end goals of communism is from each according to his ability to each according to his need. Now, we may not agree with that particular uh, mindset, but ultimately not all communists are violent people. Some of them just want to exist and peacefully have their own little commune. What's wrong with that, Al? Well, uh, you've misstated and mischaracterized what communism is because well, in what is practice, it, then? it is the most diabolical system, it's ridiculous. the atheistic system, which by its very nature enslaves mankind. Well, well I don't disagree with that statement. The socialist implementations of communism have enslaved mankind, but there's nothing enslaved there's nothing uh relating to slavery with a few people coming together and having a farm that's a commune where they're all there communally and they're putting their efforts into a central pot and pulling out what they need from that pot. I don't agree with that particular economic order, but you know, it doesn't mean that there's anything wrong or inherently it's wrong with that. Voluntary in voluntary but in the Soviet Union when they went into the Ukraine, Stalin created an artificial famine. There was plenty of grain, but he did that to bring the Ukrainians under control. Not everyone okay. who's and a it, communist agrees with what Stalin did either. Right, and if I mean, that doesn't have anything to do with MLK. If the Ukrainians went to their own garden and took an ear of corn out of their own garden, they were punished with death. Yeah, that's horrible, but what does it have to do with Martin Luther King? And... In, in, he was controlled by the communists that destabilize our society. And Ridiculous. That Thanks today. for the call, Al. Toll free numbers 855 450 free. Maybe there was some sort of uh, dastardly plot behind Martin Luther King with a, some communist speechwriter or whatever. But Martin Luther King brought people together. He um, you know, well, gave people the courage to stand up for their rights and, and it just led some amazing times here in the United States. And I think that his work, although debased to some extent by the government in its impl implementation of civil rights law, uh, was ultimately very, very valuable. Yeah, I would agree with that. He's a hero. But, you know, it's very common for people to find fault uh, with heroes. I mean, it's, you know, as we were talking about earlier, not all heroes are perfect people. And what do you want to focus on? Do you want to focus on the things that the person might have gotten wrong earlier on in life, some of the people that they associated with who may have been less than desirable, or the message that they brought to the world? What was primary about what they were doing? I'd rather focus on the good stuff. Yeah. Your thoughts are welcome. We also know that he was an adulterer, but it's not like uh, people say Martin Luther King Day is about uh, committing adultery. Yeah. <laughs> Celebrate so. by sleeping with somebody other than your wife. <laughs> yeah, and the idea that Martin Luther King in somehow, in some way, has uh, put America on a path toward ruin and destruction is absolutely out he was outrageous. Talking about, he was talking about how uh, debased art, and I got the idea that it might be modern art, uh, was uh, yeah. was the problem. But the MLK statue looks very much like a look Martin Luther King Jr. Sure does. So it's very traditional in that sense. Yep. You should like it. And it says here that it was sculpted by an artist from the People's Republic of China, but yep. it doesn't say that it was made in China and trucked here. Not, that's not made clear in the Wikipedia article. Okay. There's more coming up here. You can take I've, control. I've, I know for certain they didn't truck it it's here. Free talk line. Uh, free talk lab. You ever hear about Ghost 80% AR-15 rifle kits? At Guns80.com, they are the 80% specialists, helping to protect our privacy. Look, there are forces out there right now trying to register guns for future confiscation. UN treaties threatening our Second Amendment, our freedom. You need a Ghost AR-15. Get it at Guns80.com. Call 844-2-GUNS-80. That's 844-248-6780. Own an AR-15 today and keep it a secret. Go to Guns80.com. That's Guns80.com. 8442 guns 80 
Worried about getting sick and feeling terrible for days or even weeks? You need Immudine for a healthy immune system. Why get sick and bother with products that just don't work? For just a dollar a day, Immudine is all natural and safe for all lifestyles. Call 866-257-8668 to buy now before it's too late, before you get sick. Or go to immudyne.com, immudine.com, or call 866-257-8668. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. Did you know that Free Aid is a mutual aid, educational, and networking organization? At Free Aid, we support volunteers who provide first aid. We do outreach to the public about health and safety, and we bring together medically skilled freedom lovers. Free Aid is made possible by your generous support. Donors can receive great gifts like first aid kits, t shirts, silver dime cards, and hoodies. The Free Aid Silver Dime Card Project is sponsored in part by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage, Freedoms Phoenix, and Don't Tread on Meme. Visit fr33aid.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a free, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist libertarian community, and it's, it's only getting bigger. That's amazing. To be able to move to a place where other people like, passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do, though, is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying, let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com, 101reasonsfilm.com. You're listening to the best liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live. You dial toll-free here, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We've got Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. Of course, you can bring up anything. It is the Martin Luther King Day edition of Free Talk Live. And what does that mean? Well, we're here and we're live. And I think we all like Martin Luther King on this radio program, not including our callers, at least Al in Bangor, who uh, was calling to drag his name through the mud. Uh, the toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. I got no problem with a communist. What I have a problem with, and I have no problem with a capitalist, what I have a problem with is one of those ists forcing their system on me. I don't want to necessarily participate in one or the other. I want freedom. I want the freedom to be able to choose in which systems I participate or in which systems I help create or whatever, but I don't want any of it forced upon me. That's where I draw the line. I don't draw a line through somebody else's ideology or through somebody else's beliefs. I don't care what your beliefs are, and I don't care what kind of you know 
farm you want to live on or how you want to organize yourself with your friends and your family. That's your business. Yeah, it's live and let live. Right. You keep it your business. I'll keep my business my business. And if we need to do business together, that's cool, too. I can do business with a communist. Doesn't matter to me. I don't care what their beliefs are. are. Are they on the up and up? Are they offering me a good product at a good price? That's all I care about. Are there, are there uh, crops from the farm rotting or are they in good shape? You know, if they're in good shape, I don't care what organization system they used to send out, you know, to figure out who's going to be out in the field plucking the crops from the ground. Doesn't bother me. Toll free numbers 855 450 free. Cameron is in New Mexico, I believe, listening in Albuquerque to Kiva. Hello, Cameron. Hi, how are you guys doing tonight? Hey, what's on your mind, Cameron? Uh, not much. I just want to call in and say hello. Well, you're on the air, but you really should call a talk radio show for more than just to say hello. I mean, because if everybody just called in to say hello, it would be a pretty boring show. So, Cameron, was there something that you actually wanted to talk about, considering you have an international audience in uh, you know countless countries worldwide listening to you? Wow. What a... Uh, <laughs> Way to put the That's pressure a, on, Ian. It's quite a moment there. <laughs> nice. Way to, f- <laughs> Way to go, Cameron. Thanks for that, buddy. Toll-free numbers, 855-450-FREE. Let's go to James. He never disappoints. In Arizona, you're on oh, no. Free Talk Live. Hello? James? Yeah, Derek. Hello? Derek Gay, about- yeah. Hello, Minister Freeman. About a month ago, Derek Gay, you mentioned... In passing a terrible incident that happened in Sydney that day that you, uh, to me, shockingly called random. Curiously, uh, without having to mention why the terrorist did what he did, mind you, for your audience, Sydney is in Australia. The next day, in Pakistan, uh, 135 kids were mowed down, literally. Mm. And since then, Boko Haram has murdered thousands in some place called Nigeria. Yeah. And since then, another random act of terrorism has happened in Paris. Uh, yeah. Where guys walked in with machine guns and said, uh, Allah is to be, is being avenged. And they, they did it in camera, literally. Allah is being avenged. Muhammad is being avenged. What are you murdered. getting at? Are you saying and these they, aren't random because getting, these people were Muslim? No, may I finish the sentence and the thought, and please don't interrupt. Because I'll get to my question for you, since you're a real thinker, uh, like your roommate. Um, and now Minister you're Edge. rambling. Get but on I, with it. I'm not rambling. Yeah, you are. My get to your question. My point is Minister Edge and his defending the murder of Americans in Iraq, by the way. None of the countries that I just mentioned. Which murder of which Americans in, in Iraq? Let me finish the thought. <laughs> You've made an accusation. I need to know what you're talking about. You've talked a lot about Iraq in this Free Talk Live episode, Minister Edge. About I talked America. about soldiers Deserving. in Iraq. Soldiers Deserving. aren't murdered. Deserve. Yeah, they are. When Americans are in a just war that we, uh, yes, we did. <laughs> 18 months after 9-11, by the way. A year and a half. We What's that have to do with it, though? I mean, it did, had nothing to do with 9-11. I thought there was going to be a question for Derek J. I, this... Yes, Derek J. There were no Americans in any of those countries, no American servicemen in any of those countries. But the point I'm getting at, Minister Freeman, is none of those murders of innocent people that happen to be Westerners are, are, are random. And uh, Islamic terrorism, Muslim extremists, predate America as fictitious as you think it is. Literally, Derek J. So I was right, James. The thread that ties all this together is you think they're not random because they're Muslims. No, you call them random. I don't think they're random. You use the word random. That's what Derek J. said. Thanks for the call tonight. Toll-free number, 855-450-FREE. Anything to add? He must be low on his meds. (laughs) Well, okay, so there's two positions here. You can take one of two positions. You can take the position that the United States government sort of stirs the beehive of uh, terrorism by going and occupying foreign lands um, and thus uh, focusing the the, the radical militant uh, Islamic uh, terrorist types on this country. Or you can take the position as Islam's bayad. 
And, um, you know, those folks are just dangerous. They've got a dangerous religion and blah, blah, blah. Now, uh, you know, if, if that's the position you're going to take, I'm willing to debate that position. I think that... Why? Don't you think it lends it credibility if you debate that? Mm, I, I No, I, I think that it's No, worth especially just, not if you bring Dobby Barker on or, <clears throat> or Will Cauley from Muslims for Liberty because they will just clean house with anybody who is talking trash about... Uh, the uh, the Muslims and the Islamic religion. Yeah, yeah and I, th- I don't think it has as much to do with Islam as it has to do with sort of a, a culture that's going on over there. But you, what you need to consider is is that many of these people in these countries haven't been free for centuries. And what they want is they want some kind of freedom for themselves. If you want Shocking. to fight a war— You mean they're human beings? Yeah. Huh. If you want to fight a war, the best way to get people on your side is religion. Because mm. religion, even above patriotism— what they're promising these people, they're saying, look, you can live in heaven after you die. That's a pretty nice deal. You get, uh, you know, whatever amount of virgins and you're in this awesome place and all, all you have to do is fight this war for us. So religion is a really great rallying point. It is incredibly useful. I don't particularly like the religion. I don't particularly like most, uh, you know, religions out there. They're just not for me. But... I do understand why religion is used. The many of these people are radicalized by US foreign policy. It's true. They wouldn't be as effective in recruiting killers if it weren't for the US government going over and bombing and murdering people, but even so, they're still not all that effective. I mean, given the amount of the what billion plus Muslims there are in the it's world. It's like 1.5 billion. Yeah, something yeah. like that. Uh, the, given the huge amount of Muslims there are, the amount of terrorism going on is very, very, very small. You know, maybe uh, one one thousandth of a percent or something like that, right? Like we're talking about a very unusual crew of people in the same way that most Christians are not out there violently murdering people, that there's a very small, small percentage of Christians who would be willing uh, to use violence to further their religious ends. Now, obviously, we're accepting the people that are in the military who believe themselves as one one religion or another, uh, but my point being that there really isn't a uh, an issue with Muslim people committing terrorism uh, not any more so than I think anybody else in the world. No, it doesn't make sense to paint with such a broad brush. I mean, they could have had lots of uh, things in common. These different murderers. Maybe they all had mustaches. Maybe they all had brown eyes. And you don't you don't say that uh, just because these people had a certain quality, then they're all murderers. It, it just seems wrong to drag Islam well, through the mud. There's nothing in James's. Um, Complaint that references any text uh, any text from Islam. I think that's crazy, though. Um, what I is mean, crazy? Th- that that claim that Derek just made because Which the claim? fact is these people are killing in the name of their religion. Yeah, so but you can't separate from that. Do they have a radicalized? Uh, maybe there's people who kill in the name of their religion is with Christianity. They've murdered abortion doctors and things like that. Sure, they do. I'm, I'm not claiming that they don't. But that doesn't but- mean all Christians are bad. No, but that's not what Derek was saying. Derek was saying that, uh, well, just because, uh, you know, they happen to be Islam, they might have mustaches too. No, no I mean, they're killing because, their their stated reason, they're killing because of Islam. But it's that a- seemed to suggest that Islam is the problem. It's a, I, it's I don't a, necessarily believe that. It's a very small section of people who've, you know, misinterpreted the uh, Muhammad's teachings. Which, Agreed. You know, would be the same things true for those Christians who are also misinterpreting Agreed. Jesus' teachings. 855 450 free. More coming up. It's Free Talk Live. Lose the winter blues and warm up with hot flooring deals from Lumber Liquidators. Thinking about hardwood? Consider bamboo. We've got the number one brand and we'll help you get it for less. Like Strand Bamboo. It's twice as hard as oak and for a limited time, it's only $1.99. Why pay as much as $4.99 for bamboo at other stores? We've got deals on over 70 styles from an incredible $1.79. Plus, pre-finished hardwood, laminate, and more for less than half what you'll pay somewhere else. And 18-month special financing. Now is the time to warm up your home with new floors. So visit LumberLiquidators.com to find a store near you. DVD. Books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. 
Alex Jones here. For the last two years, I've been working with top doctors, nutritionists, and chemists to design a nutraceutical formulation that has truly life-changing health benefits. So many other formulations out there contain toxic ingredients, synthetic additives, and even GMOs. Introducing the all-new Ancient Defense Herbal Immunity Blend, crafted with over 14 key ancient herbs and extracts to supercharge and prepare your body for what experts admit is the most dangerous season of the year. We have rejected hundreds of other formulations in our quest to bring you what is simply the most powerful and comprehensive proprietary formula that we have ever created in the realm of herbal immunity. Experience the benefits of combining over 14 ancient herbs and extracts with exciting new advances in nutraceutical science. Now is the time to secure ancient defense for you and your family. Visit InfoWarsLife.com or call 1-888-253-3139. That's InfoWarsLife.com. Are you about to meet the media? If you're about to be interviewed, do their homework for them. Know this about the person who will interview you. He or she is busy, so expect minimal, if any, preparation. He or she doesn't know as much about your topic as you do. He or she isn't as concerned as you are about getting your message out, so you need to take responsibility. Provide a biography and fact sheet, photographs, or other materials that tell your story. Story. Reporters won't be put off if you supply frequently asked questions. Remember, Public Speaking 101, at the end of the speech, what's the one thing you want them to remember? You can download the document I supply to reporters who interview me and squirm through a video that demonstrates how not to conduct your media interview at www.survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877 9938 while our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. We invite you here to take control of the airwaves. Even in the remaining moments, there is enough time for you if you dial in right now, 855-450-FREE or Skype in. At username lrn.fm. With you tonight, it's Ian here. Derek J. And Mark. Check out Derek's website. It's derekj.me for all kinds of things related to Derek. Uh, you have been in print recently. I know you scanned in a, a recent appearance of yours in a local newspaper about Bitcoin. Has that one been posted yet? I know no. you scanned it. Okay. No. That's on the to-do list. I know you've been catching up. Uh, with you've just got so many irons in the fire, Derek J. It's it's really hard to even keep track of everything you're doing. Uh, I imagine you sometimes have a difficulty keeping track. I have a few calendars, yeah. Yeah, so uh, you're a busy guy, and people can do their best to keep up with you over at DerekJ.me. And uh, are you still doing the fundraiser for the gun thing? Oh, yeah, that's at GoFundMe.com slash NHCCW. And, th and that gun thing is mm -hmm. that I was recently denied a concealed carry license um, Martin Luther King Jr. was also denied a concealed carry license in 1956, if you want to look up more on that. Sounds like evidence you're a communist. <laughs> Could be. No, uh, I am not a communist. I was just denied, uh, for the same reason he was, an unsuitable uh, person. Mm. The, the, the local government decided that I am not suitable for uh, concealed carry. So 
I think that's ridiculous. I've never committed a violent crime in my life. I'm not even accused of doing anything violent. Right. And the government just has it out for me. So You are appealing to yeah. the Supreme Court in New Hampshire. That yeah. appeal has been filed, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. So that's moving forward. Now, of course, the gears turn awfully slowly in this supposed justice system. So you probably won't actually have your attorney arguing in front of the Supreme Court until sometime this fall would likely be in a good guess at the right. time frame, but that gives you plenty of time to fundraise. Yeah, and I think this is important for all people. You know, there shouldn't be a little. There, you shouldn't have to ask the local government permission to carry a weapon, uh, either concealed or not. And I prefer the term discreet. You know, discreet carry, not concealed. Because I'm not hiding anything from anyone. I just, I don't. I, I need to put on a winter coat sometimes. And yeah, I have the right to open carry sure. here in New Hampshire, but it would be really difficult to open carry in the winter. In the winter so. time. That's what I want. The so freedom. Where is the best place for people to go to get the latest on that? The gun case. GoFundMe.com slash CCW. Or you can go to my website, DerekJ.me, and there's a little link on the side of the page. That's easy. Yeah. DerekJ.me. Link on the side of the page. Look for it and help out Derek J with that fundraiser. I think it's a great, uh, great purpose. I look forward to being there uh, at the Superior Supreme Court hearing. So Daily Mail and a bunch of other websites are reporting on a story that a number of people in the Liberty community have been passing around as though there's some sort of conspiracy afoot. And it's about a guy who created a movie or was, I guess, in the process of creating a movie, uh, ostensibly. We don't know where he was in that process. There was a trailer, I guess, mm -hmm. that came out for this movie called Gray State. Mark, have you seen this trailer? I it's been some time, I thought. Um, I don't know. Uh, Derek J., have you seen the trailer? Yes. What were your imp opinions of this uh, this thing when you saw it? And was um, it like a year ago or so when you saw it? Maybe? Well, yeah, I saw it about a year ago, and then I saw it again uh, earlier today just to, oh, okay. to, to catch up on I it. I have not refreshed on it since I originally saw it. Yeah, and it is frightening. It paints a picture of uh, an America... A few, uh, not too distant future where a tyrannical government and FEMA camp style jackboot military police come in and raid homes and are shooting people in the head and there's blood everywhere and there's empty store shelves when this one mother and her family go to the grocery store. Lots of terror uh, in this film. Very scary. When I saw it, I thought, hmm, okay. This isn't particularly attractive because it seemed like, uh, and I, I don't know if this is the best word to use to describe it, but it seemed like it was fetishizing violence against the state. Well, yeah, it sort of called for a citizen uprising against right. the government, and it sort of made the case that win or lose, this was important to do. To just up, as To a, rise up? Yeah, just mean? as a metaphysical statement or something. Like, even if you go down fighting, like, this is important, and I, I think that's kind of stupid and crazy yeah it seemed to, like to be the kind of uh it seemed like to be a filmmaking style that was to encourage people to emulate what they saw on the screen like the fantasy uh, essentially there's a lot of people in the liberty movement who have these violent fantasies i know i used to be one of them so that's why i can relate to it i don't i'm not anymore i believe in peace but you know back when i did have these violent fantasies about oh you know we got to have the you know machine gun and the bulletproof vest to be ready for when the government comes to take our rights away and you know prepare for the end that kind of mentality that seems to be who this movie is aimed at and it seems to be a movie that gives those people the sort of outlet to fantasize openly about you know violence against the state now again the the context of the the movie or at least the trailer makes it sound like oh well this is just self defense you know the government's attacking these people and they're you know organizing to to strike back uh, against the state but it just seems like that fantasy violence at the point where this is what he wants to see happen he's not yeah. willing to do it himself but he is willing to make a movie that sort of blows that up into hollywood esque kind of proportions and really really fantasizes well, also about that. the important part of this uh, trailer is that it emphasizes is that when the time the people when the time people decided to finally revolt it was too late yes yeah, so it's sort of suggesting that start don't early. wait yeah yeah um I, it was a real turn off for me and i'm you know that's not the kind of movie i would throw my support behind it's, it's made by a gun cleaner you know so one of these guys gun who polisher, fetish, sure. right yeah someone who fetishizes on violence and probably in the pictures that they show on all of the uh newspapers that are 
reporting on this is this director David Crowley in gas masks and holding big guns with bayonets well, and we armor. haven't said yet why he's being reported on so we've talked about the, the movie that oh. this guy was involved in right but the the reports are that this guy's dead and his family is also dead his wife and a kid at least uh, all in their home and the the allegation is a murder suicide in that uh, he killed his family and then killed himself very sad. Which is absolutely tragic, but some people are acting like, this is unbelievable. How could this have happened? He's a family man who cared about his family, and it's the government. It's clearly a plot to stop stop his movie. And, you know, this is kind of the, the thrust of some of the people out there who are posting this. And to me, this doesn't seem to be a surprise at all. You've got somebody who's likely a paranoid individual who's arming up. You can see a shot of his garage. He's got weapons in the background. He's carrying a bayonet, a rifle with a bayonet while wearing a gas mask and a police police uniform and like a or a, like a, an armored vest or something like that uh and the, you know that's i'm sure one of many pictures of him with uh with his 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 guns and again i have no problem with having guns and you know practicing with them and all but of that but when your activism is preparing for over a violent overthrow of the government mm-hmm. if that's what your activism is i uh, like i encourage you that you need to figure out something else because this is harming you. It's not harming the government. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so far, this has been tried many times, many ways, and it hasn't harmed the government yet. It's not going to. The government's going to use you and your activism, whatever it might be, to show how uh, it is needed and necessary. Mm. You're you're the problem, really, and not the solution. Please come check out the Free State Project because when I felt this way when I lived in Florida, yep. literally, when you talk about these violent fantasies, uh, yeah, I mean, I would yell. I be when I by myself at my house, I'd sort of act it out and yell and these kind of things. I wouldn't normally act anything else out, but I was so emotionally sort of activated by this that uh, you know I'd find myself. You know, pretending to react to whatever these situations are that I'd see in the news at any given cir- circumstance. It's an it's, unhealthy place to be mentally. It really is. And if you, I mean, I'm not surprised a murder-suicide might have occurred no, from especially that. Especially when you think about it. This but this guy, changed it for me. The Free State yeah. Project really changed that for, for me, me because too. I see hope for liberty in the world. Right. Where I was, I did not. And where people who are thinking like they don't see a hope You're for alone. liberty. You feel the alone. The only option they feel like they have is a bulletproof vest and machine gun. And if that's your option, your options stink. You might as well pick up and move your life across the the country. Mm. You get what you prepare for. Yeah. So why not prepare for a world of peace and abundance with friends and neighbors who live in New Hampshire. And if this guy was under the mental kind of stress that would lead him to make this violent, fetishizing fantasy film about killing government people, uh, if he was in that kind of a dark place, and this seems like a dark, you know, not a very happy movie, as I'm recalling from the trailer that I saw, then who knows what his mindset was and where he ended up going because whatever it was i'm you know you don't end up killing your wife and kid necessarily because you believe the government's out to get you so to me it seems like he had a mental break something went bad yeah. and he had a break and there were and while he was on the break he you know this mental break where he's crazy he's surrounded by weapons and the people that he loves but in the moment he might have been insane and Apparently, tragedy. his family saw him at Christmas. He hadn't been seen in three weeks. Apparently, their bodies were rotting there in the house for three weeks, which tells me he didn't have close friends or family, no one to check on him or call mm. on him or check on his Facebook page. And where were his associates who were helping him make this movie? I mean, it's been over two years in the making now. Did they pocket the wouldn't, cash? Wouldn't I mean, they what be happened? saying, uh, hey, what, what's going on, man? Did you get the latest edit done? Or, right. or You would expect something like that, but they didn't have any support, it seems. And, you know, you could call a suicide hotline, too. Tragic stuff. Uh, we're short on time, but let's get uh, Robert in here. Robert, sh- sorry for the short uh, short shrift. Go ahead. You're an activist tool, Derek A., and I never use Oh, uh, You know, it's not one. nice to call under fake names, uh, James. You only get one call per night, and you should follow the rules because there's not very many rules here on Free Talk Live, and it's not like we don't let you call every single night. So there you go. Hey. Uh, It's been Ian here with you. Derek J. And Mark. Check out Derek J's website, DerekJ.me, and don't forget freetalklive.com. We'll see you tomorrow night online. In the meantime, freetalklive.com. Get to New Hampshire if you love freedom. I'm a free talk live. But we have the opportunity. No one has the opportunity. (laughs) Look, (laughs) just hold on. on. Just because the slaves can pick the head slave 
Does it mean that the slaves are free? Oh, that's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. Look, if people actually got up and voted for, for things, there might actually be some change. People do Second actually all, get up and vote for things, and a change always results in the same crap. What are you going to do that's different by voting? Two choices between crap sandwiches, man. You're speaking out of both sides of your mouth. On the one hand, you're saying, oh, hardly anybody votes, so I can't. I, you can barely say this is a person of right. And then I say, well, gosh, if people get up and vote, maybe that, things will change. Hold on, that was right. only one thing he brought up. Here's he what I mean. When people do vote, it doesn't make any difference. Because people of a number of reasons. People never vote in numbers that could actually reflect what Why they should I vote for any of these thugs? They're killers. They're murderers. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done. Get a great deal. And a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. The live edition of Liberty Conspiracy is next, after the news, here on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates, online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Monday, January 19, 2015. Gold is trading at $1,280, silver at $17.80, and Bitcoin is trading around $210. Today's metal price is brought to you by Midas Resources Incorporated, helping clients convert their paper 401ks and IRAs to solid gold and silver. Get their 10 Reasons book free by calling 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. How much food is in your pantry right now? Could you feed your family for two weeks, one week? Could you feed them for even three days without any help? Keeping an emergency food storage kit is the most effective way to begin to ensure your family's well-being during an emergency. eFoods Direct is food security for whatever the future holds. Go to eFoodsDirect.com slash Liberty Beat or call 800-620-5520 to learn more about food security in a time of crisis. In the news, four years before the White House blamed North Korea for a cyber attack on Sony, the U.S. government was reportedly hacking the country's computer system. In 2010, the National Security Agency began the operation, according to the New York Times, in a report published Sunday, which cites newly disclosed NSA documents. The NSA was able to infiltrate many of the computers and networks used by North Korean hackers and provided evidence that Kim Jong-un's computer wizards were behind the hack of Sony's email system. Sources told the Times. The evidence gathered by the software hidden to monitor North Korea's activities proved critical in persuading President Obama to accuse the government of Kim Jong-un of ordering the Sony attack. The controversial Transatlantic Trade and Investment Partnership has faced resistance from critics who say the deal would allow multinational corporations to override national laws that protect the environment, consumer rights, and food standards. The so-called investor-to-state dispute settlement has been suspended after 150,000 objections in a European Union consultation exercise. The ISDS would protect foreign investors from decisions by national governments. The Trans-Pacific Partnership, another international trade deal, has also faced heavy scrutiny from the public. 